Welcome. Oh. And, and we're live. <laughs> you see, we fucked. Oh, we made a mistake already because actually Pete's joined us for the first time. This Sorry. is not the first episode. <laughs> no, it's not. This is the sixth episode. Where have you been? You're late. Wow. Where have you been? I, I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I didn't know this was going on. It's incredible. No, Pete's been very busy. He's been buying and selling businesses in the last few months. Yeah. He's been not coming having to these fun. episodes, having fun. But now he's joined more fun doing this. And he's joined us. So welcome yeah. to episode not one. Six. Six. And just to recap, Pete and myself. Oh, there's something in the way here. We wrote a book called Agency Nomics. Agency Nomics. Actually, Pete came up with a name. We should probably head just... Head of brand, actually. Head of brand, brand yeah. And uh, Pete comes up with all the names, actually. Uh, and so he came up with Agency Phonics as well. <laughs> Sorry, I should say that. Um, anyway, so Agency Nomics, and we decided to... Our editor told us that <clears throat> we should only write, write about one section uh, and go into lots of details or one part of the story. But, you know, we were determined to try and cover as much of agency life as possible um, but if, even though we did that, we still didn't get into enough detail on every area. So we, uh, we created the, the vodcast to do what? As you explained earlier, a vodcast is video. <laughs> yes. Pete doesn't know the day. difference. Every day is a school day for and, me with this stuff. So. And that this is, is a double act. This, <laughs> yeah. this is really good, actually, because just to let everybody know, that's actually a really good link because um segue because we are a lot of you have been complaining we've had lots of complaints we haven't have we? inundated in fact if you do want to complain in future can you just send <laughs> send the emails to <laughs> Pete, not me because i don't take criticism very well um but but actually a lot of you uh, wanted a podcast rather than a vodcast of course like we get that so we're now creating um each episode is going to be put into podcast so in the next few weeks that will start to roll out so um for those of you who like to listen in the car on the way to work or like to listen to podcasts when you're walking, whatever, you'll get to do that. So, um, so yeah, but Pete didn't know the difference. In the po- he, we were recording the podcast earlier on and <laughs> he thought he was on video. You are being set up here, Pete. Isn't he? it's Pete absolutely so he's like I standing and he's posing for the video. And then we're like, <laughs> you do realise this is not the video, it's the I, podcast. my posture? <laughs> this, this is audio. Oh, okay, yeah. fine. So, um, yeah, so welcome. for radio. So, be- but you see, the guest is already in the conversation, so, Sorry. but, but that's okay. Can you interrupt it? Oh, you're cool. Um, but I just want to say a couple of quick thank yous. Well, no, for one, actually, really, it's to um, Warhive, um, because, you know, without them, this show doesn't happen. Everything we do, Agency Nomics and Agency Phonics, is all not for profit. It's all a social enterprise. Everyone who does everything donates their time. Um, even our guests, we don't pay them. Sorry. No. Um, we just give them water, coffee. And we, um, the Warhive are just been fantastic, right? They they help us with all of this equipment in there. And um, in fact, <laughs> the joke was actually that we've actually helped, we've had to you know, get my, force them to buy even more equipment because actually some of the going live stuff is a little bit more te- technical than we I, I don't think they know that yet. No, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> uh, yeah, thank you to Warhive because without them, the show wouldn't happen. So please, if you ever need anything to do with <clears throat> cloud, you know, hosting, uh, infrastructure, anything to do with that kind of stuff, AWS, you know, Azure, um, Microsoft Cognitive Service, all that stuff. Speak to these guys here and say you came to them because of us because then it eases the guilt that I have <laughs> of taking their CTO to be a producer for us. He's got far more important things to do. Um, and lastly, we actually have our new producer with us today, who's Caitlin. And um, we're going to try and do our bit to help local students um, who are studying media to come in and get more work experience, basically, which is, you know, get real life stuff, help them get their LinkedIn profile and their CVs up to date for when they want to get jobs. So Caitlin's joined us from Farnborough Sick Form, which is a very good sick form. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Caitlin. Thank you, Caitlin. Right. So if the camera angle's going wrong today, it's just because it's her first day. So just give her a break. All right. (laughs) Um, So we better introduce this guest. We had. Yeah. Because all we heard him laugh so far. Probably haven't seen him. So um, today, I'm very pleased to um, f- introduce our first male guest, um, who is Hugh Robertson, who I've known for, do you know, I've known you for quite a while now. Well, well, it's, yeah. it's probably a good, like, 12 years. I would say so. Um, and Hugh is the, are you actually technically the CEO now? Was it MD? Or well, how, I'm, how not, you... I'm not really a CEO, so I kind of go you? founder and CEO. <laughs> Founder and I CEO. slip off at the I, end. Cause... I like the founder and CEO because it oh, makes the point. Yeah, that, there's you know, expectations, isn't there? Yeah, but you know there's a hard luck story behind it when it's a founder, right? So, <laughs> um, that's the sympathy, <laughs> that's the sympathy <laughs> vote. <laughs> yeah. They kind of go, oh, founder, I'm with you. And then he goes, CEO, okay, let's get yeah. a bit different. 
And your your agency is called RPM. Now, just before we start, so the, so Pete and I, we had I don't know if you saw in the previous episodes, but we had two sisters in, yes, who were siblings, and they're called Skin and Blister yeah. because it's rhyming slang <laughs> for sister. sister. Now, your agency is called RPM, but Pete and I think you should change it because you and your brother Dom, your siblings too, we are, and your agency obviously is much much bigger. You're the other end of the journey to them because you've been going for like. 27 years. 27 years. Yeah. <laughs> and but so I got Pete to look up what was rhyming slang for brother. I hate so, to think. Well, I think <laughs> it love could it. You're gonna love, love it. it. Love it. Yeah. Well, can we just can we just say can we just put a caveat that anyone who tries to register the domain names on the basis of watching this live oh. before I can get to it. It's already covered. It's compared to veg. <laughs> Excellent. For a small price. Here we so go. how do you how does this sound? The big big reveal. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. The rhyming slang for brother is manhole cover. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to well, work. No, is it's it? not going to work. It's not going to okay. work. I mean, RPM is tough enough, but manhole cover. <laughs> okay. It's going to hide a multitude. I of think manholecover.com has just been bought. <laughs> <laughs> Although the pothole is a, is a, a debate, is a raging but debate. Simon the CTO yeah. is already on it. He's literally <laughs> He's doing, doing it as yeah. we speak. Yeah. God damn it. So we might we might find you end up with uh, manhole dot cover. <laughs> Uh, Hammersmith.com oh, or Shabu. Shabu. <laughs> yeah. Anything is available in Shabu. <laughs> so, um, so welcome. Thank you. Very nice to be here, and thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. And so, I don't know where we should start the story, really. But I mean, I, I there's a few things I'd like to talk about today. I mean, firstly, mm. you guys have I know a little bit about your story. So I know that um, in the recent years, you've you, you kind of grew really big and then you had to, you kind of almost grew too big yeah, and then you lost yeah. your way a little bit. So at some stage, I'd like to get that in. Sure, sure. But also I'd really like to know about how you started because half of the owners that come in of agencies came from an agency background. We find that, don't we? Like yeah, half, yeah, they've, yeah. Either, they've either had an agency background or they've not, they've literally come out of uni and they just, they start. And that last, our last guest was that person. Yeah, but you actually yeah. had a little bit of a background. Yeah. So can you give us a bit about, tell about your story? And sure. Sure. Um, how it was started. So um, the actual agency I was, I was, um, I actually, I've got no qualifications, which is really good qualifications for agency life. But um, I, I, it's a good thing. I'm proud. Um, so I was kicked out of school quite early. And what were you kicked out of school for? Well, that's a whole other story. Um, but I was basically, I was very sadly, I was paralysed playing rugby. Oh, and so cool. uh, it was a stunned spinal cord, and it was temporary, luckily. So as you can see, I have recovered to a degree. <clears throat> But um, I then found alcohol and I was very angry. So they right. basically said that the time here was done. And actually sport was my redemption. And I subsequently discovered afterwards that I was also dyslexic. So actually that's why school was just hard work. And I think agencies are an amazing meritocracy and actually they welcome all comers. Uh, and so for me, it felt like a good place to go. But I guess the story started, um, I was uh, ironically trying to earn as much money as I could. And I was doing a whole variety of jobs. And um, ironically, for a back sufferer, I was had an HGV license. So I was driving what? trucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I started driving trucks. And while I was doing that, um, I got talking to somebody and he said he was running an event in Scotland that wasn't making any money. And he said, I don't know what we're doing with it. So I kind of said, that's really interesting. So I started to explore that. And then did the truck driving at the weekends to earn the cash because it was, wasn't making any money. And then I uh, got a phone call from a friend who was working for an agency in London, said they want to do road shows for a particular whiskey, go to all the Highland Games. And I was like, well, who's, who's going to say no to that? So I kind of... He started, wouldn't. He loves whiskey. Oh, yeah, they, I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> yeah. There are alternative drinks available, obviously. Yeah, absolutely, but yeah. Very few compare. <laughs> but we are looking for sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> Portfolio brands can, of course, apply. Yeah. And um, I then uh, really enjoyed that. And so I, at the weekends, we're taking over from driving trucks. I was now driving exhibition units around uh, Scotland to go to all the game fairs, which was an amazing experience. So you'd kind of drive up Friday, park up overnight, build it, get absolutely wow. swallowed for 24 hours, and then sober up, of course, and then drive back. And then go back but to the day How did you drive with your back being like it was? Well, I had to stop. I mean, there's, there's a whole other. I All mean, there's right, just okay. you know, there's, there yeah. are much easier, easier routes you to take. I around. have not taken any of them, but I had to stop driving every twenty minutes. Yeah. Get out and then get back. So basically, every twenty wow. minutes on, the, on this podcast, <laughs> he's going to stand up. <laughs> no, and, it's improved. I'm tired to then, say. Oh, I see. Okay, well, that's <laughs> we've, we've lengthened the the, uh, the sitting uh, time. Anyway, um, I really enjoyed it, and I said, "Look, have you got any jobs in London?" Because actually, I'd quite like to come down and explore the big smoke for myself. And uh, I then went through an interview process and got offered a job. 
for a, a marketing agency which absolutely epitomized the horror of the late 80s. Really? And the founders um, who are still around in the industry um, set a bar very high in terms of their expectations of what they wanted from us as employees. Everyone right now is looking on your LinkedIn. And I know. Work out yeah. <laughs> Manhole cover. <clears throat> and um, it was that kind of really tough starting out. They, the demands were high and the rewards were very low. And actually they weren't people that really valued their employees. So after sort of six months of this, uh, we were sitting there going, there's got to be a better way of doing it. So uh, after long and many drunken evenings talking in pubs, we're going, yeah, we can do this, we can do this. We met on the Friday and we said, well, we meet back in seven days' time and we've all got to raise five grand or find £5,000. And if we haven't, we'll stop talking about it. If we've got it, we do it. So sure enough, we met back, I think it was the Rat and the Parrot in uh, Fulham, and we met back there around the corner from the agency and we were like, How's it going? Yeah, we've got it. Got it. Okay, we're going to do it. So we had 15 grand <laughs> wow. committed. So we walked in, uh, handed our notice in, and uh, promptly got escorted back out of the building. And the, it goes a bit blurry here because we then um, set up in a, the front room of the flat that I was sharing with a mate. So down I think it's our first front room. We've had everything. We've kitchen had the garage and the shed, the kitchen table. Oh, well, so we, we then get to the shed. We're going to cover oh, all bases. Okay, right. <laughs> so we started there, and it was obviously we were still in contract, so we're in notice period. So we, um, and the three of us, um, Joe, who I set up with, and Ross and Joe. What, what were you going to do with the 5,000? Was it just like... We just, just need to have, we just wanted salary. a bit of reassurance. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We wanted to have some sort of... So we didn't knew. have any clients that we had came nothing. with you. We had literally. nothing. <laughs> okay. We didn't even have any computers. And how long would 5,000 lasted you back then? You I mean, well, we were paying out, we started paying ourselves 600 pounds a month. Well, it's a quite a long time. It's a quite a long time. Yeah, 10 months. We could have gone, we could have gone, yeah. gone the whole first year. you last 600 quid a month, even back then? Yeah, back I mean, in the forties. That I'm was sorry. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pre decimalization Yeah. What, and year, what year was it you started? Sorry. So we started in ninety three. So this was the this was yeah. the back end of ninety two. Yeah. And um, we Wasn't then there like a major crash like the year before. There was. We we yeah. set up in a recession. Yeah, it's always the best. Which as everyone always says, best time yeah, to start because start, if you can yeah. prove proof of concept in the toughest trading, then actually yeah. hopefully you'll last. So with Brexit it. this year, there's hope for everybody. I think literally go and do it now. Yeah, go there's and no do better it now. time. Although we would like to be thinking we could trade better with our, uh, our nearest and dearest partners in Europe. Um, so we then, we then handed, we'd handed our notice and so we were desperately looking for somewhere to run it. And Joe's uncle had a farm near Wokingham, down near here. Oh, right. And he had, oh, I've got, they've got this old cow shed. So we can go and convert that and we could turn it into an office. So we did. Uh, so you started in Wokingham? So we started in Wokingham. Wow. And uh, the, ironic, the ironic is that... Uh, uh, we used to, if when clients eventually when we got going, they'd say, well, we can come and see your offices. And we'd go, no, 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 we'll come to you as part of our philosophies. But no, no, we'd really like to come and see you. Okay. No, no, we'll really come and see you. No, we'd really want to come and see your offices. It's <laughs> <laughs> harky. So we'd then say, we just want to know what sort of uh, shoe size you are <laughs> because we need to get you boots because you can't actually get to our office without wellies because we're on a working farm. And when the tatty harvest is happening, cool. we lose all daylight. So we don't know what time of day this, which is really good for kind of working practices. Yeah. So we started our life really in a front Did room. Did you really send them wearing some boots? Yes. So we had them when they arrived. That's so cool. So uh, our eBay purchasing was pretty good. Excellent. And then ironically, we had, uh, because it was a working farm, it was a fruit farm and uh, when clients would come, we'd then give them, a kind of, I guess we were ahead of Abel and Cole and all these other yeah. available box schemes. And we gave them a little bounty bag that they'd nice. take back, which uh, they'd been to the country. I think that's the first lesson here about the the brand experience with you, you know, because yeah, what they experience. Um, there, there was an agency recently uh, somewhere. I'm, I'm going to pick somewhere like Norwich, and they and they sort of found local produce from Norwich, mm. and they made that kind of part of the brand experience. So I really like that you did that. I think I think actually Wokingham is at the place. There's more pubs. <laughs> per square mile than anywhere else in the country. There's a, it's a lot of pubs. God damn, on. there was a lot. Well, of there pubs, was, but, a lot but of again, pubs, yeah. In those days, you know, it was the, 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 being on the farm. Actually, yeah, you can get to. Yeah. Them. So. We were we were we were wholesome. So um, that was like an important start. And I think the other the other point of reference in that is that we didn't our money really was we were really eking it out. And then um, we had no clients. We got in and got to a lovely man called Steve Smith, who was the RBS bank manager in Reading. Yep. And he bought our business plan, which, I mean, there was so full of holes I could literally put my hand through, <laughs> wriggle it and come back in. And um, eventually, six months in, he called us in for a meeting. And it was one of those days that I will never forget for as long as I live because Ross and I drove in to meet Steve and Joe, the other partner, stayed at the office. And uh, 
Steve is very amicable and uh, very nice. And he said, so, uh, boys, how's it going? We go, well, you know, it's good. Getting a bit of traction. He said, but uh, the clients, I mean, all these good projections don't really seem to be holding much forward to do. They were like, no, but, you know, it's all good things. Come to those who wait. Uh, should have written that line uh, way ahead of Guinness. <laughs> And uh, he said, right, well, I, I like you guys, but I'm getting pressure from my bank, uh, from my head office, and we're going to give you six months, but we need to see some improvement on the numbers, otherwise we're going to take the loan in. And um, despite the relationship, I think because of the relationship, he'd probably been more lenient than he might have been. Um, but we left there, and as we were driving back, and as you're well remembering, 93, 94 f mobile phones were really... Only Absolutely. just coming through, so we had this, <laughs> this transporter, which you had to do a full weight month of weightlifting to be able yeah. to move this thing around. I think if anyone doesn't know how big mobile phones, they should definitely Google mobile phones in 1990. I actually nearly brought my techno phone in. <laughs> Did you? Because each single digit is this size. Yeah, wow. I mean, it's... So as we're driving back, this thing goes off, and it's Joe, our third partner, who's at the office. And he said, so, so how's the bank meeting going? Yeah, it's okay. It could be better, but, you know, it's okay. And he said, well, good, because uh, I've just had a courier who's turned up and delivered us a writ for a breach of contract. Oh, <laughs> and no. we're being sued by our previous employer. And it was one of those days where, you know, it couldn't have got any darker. So I don't know how many pubs there are in working, but we went around a few <laughs> trying to work out with our cab so was it non-solicitation stuff? It was non-solicitation yeah. stuff. Okay. And, um, and then Which also, is also a really important thing to talk about. Yeah. I guess <clears throat> both sides, you know, having Absolutely. it, making sure that your team <clears throat> Agency life, yeah. Yeah, yes. kind of go take, take yeah. your clients because often yeah. people think they can go and just approach clients. And, and, you know, and it was one of those moments where... Um, I thought, and you know, we then had to really look at our tracks. And our tracks, I'd started to do things like speaking to BT to put landlines into the cow shed. And that was before the date of the incorporation of the business. So I then had to speaking to BT to then delay. And I mean, it was just, it was, it was pretty horrific. Yeah. That doesn't sound like a great. Great it wasn't a great start. <laughs> I thought you were going to say he called and he had a, a massive, massive deal. deal. Yeah, because no, normally yeah. one step beyond no. the point of failure. Oh, is I've got when... another story on that. <coughs> yeah. So, 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 what happened next? So, um, we uh, had that moment where we're like, well, we're going to just dig in and we're going to give it everything. So, yeah. we trod. So were you not doing that in the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> we were just spending our ill-gotten gains. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> no. I think there is a lesson there about when you start out, like. I think some people, I mean, when I, I, I always say to people, um, in fact, Martin, who you just met on the way in, who's been helping us a lot with the podcast stuff and the yeah. big, all the video clips we do, he's literally just gone out on his own. And um, I said to him, you've got to treat every day like it's the last day. But in the first few, because actually you can, yeah, time right. goes really quickly. Before you know it, you're nine months in, all your money is spent. Yeah. And you haven't really got any clients. So I just said that's, you know, don't. Think it'll just you've got to treat every day like it's the last day. But I think also that the challenges. I mean, it's how the metrics have shifted from business success. You know, in those in in ninety three and on, really, we had to. You had to show you're making money. You know, you couldn't I mean, just you, have. You, you actually could, had to meet a bank manager. Yeah, I mean, you, you had, to, well, you had somebody days. you could talk to for a start, <laughs> <laughs> who knew your business, yeah. and uh, that will come back in fashion one day. It will. Right? It's going yeah. full circle. But I think also the part was that you know we had to. You had to be proven. You know, now we've got massive loss making businesses who are you know, unicorns and highly yeah. valuable. But in, in those days, actually, the metrics for success was really about growth and gen cash generation yeah. into the business. Yeah, totally. yeah. So, yes, to, honest truth, we were we were going, but it was a real focus. And I kind of know now that I respond to that kind of challenge. So, we, and this would never happen now. We had we we'd been talking to M&S for a while and um, they were hugely supportive. And I went to, to see them in Baker Street and big, said big first client or big, big first client and yeah, they'd and we'd been working on you know taking a long and it's like all those things as we know and you've talked about it uh, often it takes a long time from that initial contact and meeting to going from cold to warm to actually yeah. how long was it um it had been probably nine months wow so we'd been talking to before we left our our previous agency yeah and um crispin amazing individual who on the basis of our discussion and the work he'd seen us in terms of our creative thinking, he was willing to commit a purchase order uh, six months in advance wow. to for us to take the bank and wrote us a letter uh, to take to the bank to give to Steve well, that's incredible. to say that he was a, was a vote of confidence, which I don't think with the governance, you know, it was much more forgiving back then. It's easy to say that, but yeah. I think with the governance, you know, he wouldn't have been able to do that now. Um, but it made you a huge difference. You might be asking how much it was for. Was it? A it was five hundred thousand pounds. Okay, 
So that's a, at that time. So sizable, yeah. sizable. Yeah. Um, and it was just, it was, he was, and he was also saying there's a commitment, you know, and ultimately, and it was cleverly worded in the sense that it wasn't out and out, but ultimately yeah. <laughs> it was enough for Steve. He, he just needed something that he could then put in front of his head office and go, look, there's, there, there, is, there, is a, there is a seed of something here that's going yeah. to come. So um, that was really important for us. Nice. But going back to your point about um, those calls, so we had, we'd gone in from a new business meeting around the south side of the M25 yep. for a well-known car manufacturer. And we'd had a very good meeting. And uh, again, it was uh, two of us. And we were driving back and we got a call from the third partner who said, so how did, how did, how did it go? And we're like, yeah, it went really well. Um, I think we're going to get opportunity to go and talk to them. Um, creds went well. They liked the kind of cut of our jib. And <clears throat> he's like, great. So we got fine. See you in about 20 minutes or whatever. Next thing is I then get a call from the PA of the marketing director who we just met saying, um, I've got Mike on the phone for you. I'm like, okay. Mike comes and I said, oh, I can't remember her language. Really. What, the, what WTF is going on? I'm like, what do you mean? He said, I've just had a call from somebody who's reporting to be the managing director of your agency asking me to give him a purchase order. <laughs> And I was like, okay, I'm really sorry. I don't know what's going on here. Anyway, our, our partner... See, in America, partner, that would be normal, right? Yeah, but, oh yeah, it's a good meeting. You've got to go for it. It was the most unbelievable. And he'd, he'd, you know, he was, he'd been Had consumed. Had he misunderstood? Or he was just no, he was just consumed. He was his... consumed, desperate right. to get revenue. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just that moment where you just go... We all win there. Really, really hard. But ultimately, if there's not unity and that kind of sense of collaboration around where we're all trying to get in the same direction and you know there's obviously part of what we can talk about this, this morning but you know that is one of those signs that really started to show that yeah. we weren't utterly aligned and i guess it's those the principles of why we'd started the business which i haven't actually touched on but was one was was around the value of people having seen our experience we we're like there's got to be a better way of doing this so that was the founding principles that we're going to do a business build a business that's going to look after all of its stakeholders uh, and the second thing was then around the value of an experience. And we'd seen this working for our agency, which we were a bit of an afterthought. They go, we've done this amazing creative, promotional, integrated campaign, and we've got a kind of 100 grand budget at the end. Let's go out and talk to consumers. So we were like, actually, that's where you need to be focusing. So yeah. that was our belief is that that needs to play a much yeah. sort of larger part of the marketing plans that weren't currently being considered by our previous employer. So how many years were you in working on? <clears throat> We were in Wokingham, in sunny Wokingham, living off the land for, uh, must have been eight, eight years, okay. eight, nine years. Interesting. So uh, Pete and I work a lot with regional agencies because my yeah. age, our agency was based actually here in Farnborough. Yeah, so 500 yards away. Yeah, yeah literally. Yeah. Yeah. We've been was, looking at the roof earlier. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they've built so many buildings now, you yeah, can't actually can't see. see Forget because... Google Maps, we were just doing. <laughs> we used to have a great view. Yeah, we had a great view. The Red Arrows would fly yeah. straight over our building, which is always quite awesome. But um. So we, we, you know, um, you know, we were in, we were actually just telling the story earlier on, we were having a wild laugh because on, we were in converted barns mm. and on, um, and on Pete's first day. So I, I got to like eight people and my non-exec said, you're shit. Oh, sorry, I keep swearing today. You're really bad with your accounting. You, we are allowed to swear. He did, he did say you were shit though. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. To be fair, he did. Yeah, we are allowed to swear on here. Um, so we, um, so we, so, so he turned up and there was 42 boxes like that big in, 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 the, a room this size. in the reception yeah. the room this size yeah. he walks in and he's like what on earth no. what happened was i bought 21 <laughs> monitors and back then the 21 inch monitors were really big because they, they were thin like yeah. they are now they're yeah, the big back yeah. yeah so the you know so they was, and they <laughs> dell had sent the wrong dell were in wokingham they sent That's the right. wrong color yeah. <clears throat> they sent white but we have all black Dell machines, and we have what? And so I rang them up. And said you sent the wrong color, and then they sent all the black twenty-one blacks in. So I had forty-two, <laughs> and I mean I can't tell you like how much space this took up. And he's walking in, going, "What is so going?" So the first thing I saw was all these monitors, and I could hear a voice rowing with Dell <laughs> <laughs> behind. <laughs> Yeah, I was <laughs> like, okay, this is going to be interesting. Uh, he lasted more than one God. day, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I mean, tech, you think about the tech back then, I mean, that was the challenge. If I wanted to do work, if I needed to work at the weekend, I couldn't work remotely. Yeah. You know, I had to drive. Drive to the office. Drive to, yeah. to work here. Yeah. And the yeah. now I live around the corner from the office. Well, and, walk and, anywhere. So this was the point. So because so we had a regional agency, it's interesting you were there for eight years. Cause, so we go around, we've been all over the UK, you know, all around the world now, actually. And, and, 
the I think one of the attractions for us gen, generally because we actually we only got a couple of clients in London, which is yeah. really weird. You'd expect us to yeah. have a lot more, but I think the people in London have more empathy with us. They go, "You understand what it's like being outside of London because it is different because there are there is a restriction often to talent." Mm. You know, the client, you will lose deals oh, yeah. and they don't tell you. So I, I lost a, a really big deal. You remember Satanta Sport? Yeah. Uh, I always said I wouldn't name things on here, but whatever. There are other Do sports still... packages available. There are. There are. There are. <laughs> yeah. Let's name them all now. Sky. <laughs> and we are still looking Sky. for sponsors. Um, so uh, so, so um, Satan, I, I lost the pitch for Satanta. And they told me it was because it was a partly UX project, quite early UX project. And they said, we didn't use a red eye tracking. So this technology where yeah. you know you track your eye movements and i was like really we lost it because we could have easily have like contracted someone in to do that you know and then i bumped into the guy uh, the client at q gardens actually after i sold the business and he said to me i must i've got a little confession to make <laughs> to you he said actually the real reason you lost the business was because uh, you weren't based in london and i was like really mm. and so then i and I, actually another good friend of mine's got an agency in bristol um and he said to me you know he said like you know we we know we lose business because of it so <clears throat> so i think the empathy first of all there are some advantages because staff turnover is like on average like 30 percent london which we're going to talk about a little bit yeah of yours but it's very high and out of town it's quite low because people can't go anywhere else and, no it's, you know it's much more of a commitment <clears throat> it is but, but i'm then, only laughing because a lot of people who work in london agencies would laugh look at shepherd's bush and say that's yeah. not london yeah so well, it's, it is all relative and actually weirdly but, enough we had a lot of reverse commuters in fact yeah. they, they do here and you know coming out and the clients quite, like coming out as well yeah yeah, yeah. They, that's true a lot of clients yeah. do like coming out and as they did with you to the farm so actually we yeah, were, i'm not we, sure if that was a they enjoyed <laughs> it but it was a necessity they got a free their wellies <laughs> no they had to return them oh, they got they got the vegetables <laughs> unless oh. we were sponsored by you know we could have done that if we had a welly boot deal yeah. but um but i, I think yes yeah, so we were we were working on, i mean hunters you were <laughs> i know there are other brands I feel like that, hunters would I've, be the brand i mean you're probably old enough like me to remember wayne's world but do you remember when wayne, there was a clip on wayne's world <laughs> yeah. where he said we won't bow to sponsorship and he just keeps like you know <laughs> It's all not it's, for profit. The sponsorship money profit. just runs just keeps on. Cancel. So, uh, um, so yeah. So I think we get we have a lot of empathy with, with regional agencies. And the question we always get, which is my link to your question yeah. now, is um, you know how important did you find that move to scale from regional to London? Because a lot of people we work with. I mean, if you look at the regional agencies, there are very few you know that go beyond about four or five million. Like there's a definitely a ceiling. I'm not saying it can't happen. It does happen, and there are really good yeah, examples. Yeah. But they're really exceptional. I mean, I think it would happen much, much more. I mean, again, it's it's difficult to sound like you know been around for years, but in the nineties, you know, actual mobility, social or otherwise, was actually fairly restricted. So working in it was really tough to get good talent. Right. And and actually, because of the technological limitations, you had to be in the office. You know, you couldn't do anything else yeah. other than be in the office, apart from going out for meetings. And then we moved from there because we had to say goodbye to one of the original founders. Yeah. So we got. Got evicted from the farm, and uh, we then got to Hampton. Yeah, and we were quite excited because you yeah. know that was closer. Uh, it definitely helped from a talent perspective. There's a great uh, maze there as well. Yes, there is a great maze if you yeah. need to have a bit of a review. <laughs> <laughs> Going for a walk in the maze, <laughs> <laughs> the euphemism for a review. <laughs> forget Hampton Court and forget like all the yeah. you know the maze. Just, just go to the maze. Just sorry. go to the maze. So when they were going for a maze walk, <laughs> yeah, it was goodbye. Yeah, there's, there's uh, someone said it's the difference between we want to have a chat or we're going to have a conversation. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to have a it's, chat a conversation that's in conversation the conversation involves two way dialogue, whereas the <laughs> chat is just I'm yeah. talking diatribe. It's like more serious as yeah. well. Yeah. So I think um, Hampton actually worked much better for us in terms of we felt at least we were on some main arterial route in and yeah. out of London. Although again, socially it was actually quite tough because you'd have we had we we, we nicknamed the train ride because of those old slam doors that mm. all the way up and you had to get off at every station to go to the pub to have a drink right, and then right. get back on. <laughs> so actually. But again, um, you'd never really talk about it and it goes back to your point about regional offices, but proximity to clients even today, I think still holds true. So yeah. when we eventually, we came to the end of the lease in Hampton and we have a, a part of our business makeup, we've got a staffing um, business. And so we employed 10 brand communicators and we gave them each postcode lottery and said, go and find us our new offices. And um, it was a really interesting, you know, there's no substitute for getting people out and just walking around. Yeah. And so we kind of they came they came back with lots of good suggestions 
And uh, we then did a short list and then we found our, our latest and current yeah. home, the old Treacle which, Factory. Which is, you know, a little bit behind that because I, I used to go to... What do um, you mean? It's just been teleported in. <laughs> well, no, because it's funny because it's one of those areas that um, I used to do some work with um, the guys at Big Brother and they were at Endemol. Okay, yeah, and Endemol well, yeah. were based in that, what looked Church like a, a, yeah. a, council, a high-rise council flat. It looks like that, the building. Mm. And they, but then you'd walk in and there's this incredible studio yeah. and you were kind of around the back of there, I seem to remember. Yeah, we're a, bit, we're a bit further down, but it's a, yeah. I mean, it's a bit like we've been it's, it's a, in, but it's, it it's really a good works. space because it's not it's, where everyone goes to the North. A lot of people go to the North London, the Farringdons, you know, the very trendy Shoreditches and Clerkenwell. And they pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they used to be cheap, right? And yeah. it, like it was the West End and then it went there. But I think I quite like the South, mainly because I... Pete and I get the train to Waterloo. It's, it's easy have, for us. It's easy work. for us to yeah. get to anywhere south. You should put that as an agency <laughs> criteria for property right. search. Yeah. yeah. Can Pete. Um, I think, I think it's because, um, do you know Paul Wright or a sports? Because I used to work with him. Yeah. And he used to be, I think the bit that's all been knocked down now and turned into Westfield, he was in a, his offices were there. But yeah. I always quite like that part of London. It's really, I mean, we, we actually <laughs> ended up in a, in a, ironically in a, in, a, in a bid war against Innocent. <laughs> Oh, and right, um, really? Adam um, Bannon and Richard Reed had found it as well, and ah. we it was a race for us to get there. And that again was part of this journey is that we had an opportunity. We talked to them, it's and, a great and building, yeah. we were like, okay, it's cool, we can rent it. And there were three separate units, and we said, well, actually, we had this kind of epiphany. We're going, well, why don't we try and buy it? And we then talked to them and said, actually, they'd be more interested in selling it rather than leasing. Right. So um, by this point, the, we were down to a smaller number of partners when we started. And this was another turning point for us, which was us then having to extract every bit of cash we could find, um, yeah. remortgaging everything to then purchase the building, which meant that we then said goodbye to yeah. all the other, other founding partners. So Pete and I are not fans of people buying businesses, buying, sorry, buying their offices where we were them because they always end up outgrowing them. We always say right. to people, you're not yeah. in the property business, you're in the... And I would absolutely <laughs> wholeheartedly endorse gonna, that. No, my question to you was, has it, you know, because look, there are advantages, of course. I mean, yeah. some good tax ones with the, the SIP, you know, you can put it into pension yeah. funds. But, but I mean, has it has it had any negatives at time or not? Has it been... Uh, like, um, you... I mean, I would only say positive. I mean, we, we then moved out at a period where we then put a third floor on it. And right. actually, and we may talk so about later. Being in London for that period of time as well, I'm sure. Yeah, it's, it's just value, and yeah. it has. But also, <laughs> we then had our startups that we got involved in in 2012. So now we've got some of them uh, have taken floors within the building. Right. So it's a kind of ecosystem that yeah. works. Um, has it been a disadvantage? I would say probably not, because no. we've created an environment that is all about experience. Yeah. Um, but how many and, people were you when you moved in there as well? Oh, uh, put the roof on, so you obviously. Had yeah, we were. Well, originally when we moved in, we were, yeah. I think we were 30, 30. Five, 35 to 40 yeah because we have quite a flex in terms of what we find is when we, we I mean, how many it's funny because we, we've only read you no know, been doing the kind of more you know non-exec consulting for eight about eight years now yeah it? yeah and how many how many office moves do you think our clients have had <laughs> i think it's got to be 30 at least i would say i think it's more than maybe that. more yeah i think it's much more than that i think you know you think about the the amount of uh anyway so let's say it's somewhere between th 30, yeah, and 50. 30 and 50 yeah. or and a lot of those guys go, we want to buy our office when we go in there at a million turnover. And then by the time they're five, they think, I wouldn't yeah. buy it. I mean, of course, you could always, you know, sublet it or do anything else. But then you then you become a landlord as well as running a business. And, you know, there's that. And I did have a good friend of mine. Do you know what? In Wokingham. Oh. And he nervous. owned his building. And then when the business took a downturn, he found himself in this massive space with very few. Oh, everyone's, that's, sorry, we have little stories that we just probably just remind me of. But I won't talk about that one today. No. Uh, but anyway, he ended up with like just a few people in a very big building and couldn't sublet it, you know. And so, and that was around the last answer. So, so actually, well, there's some things like so we're always a little bit cautious, but I think there are always there are always good business cases for doing it. So, yeah. And the question I was going to ask around this was, you know, was there a business plan at that point to get the business to a certain size in terms mm. of number of people, mm. and did the building fit that, or you know, what what sort of thought process did you no, have? Going I on? mean, there was a couple. There was a couple of things really. One was that. You like the we, building. <laughs> we like the building. Yeah. It was a there was a pub. Decision. There was a pub opposite it. Right. And um, and we also there were well, there were, there were three I'm, things. I'm writing really. down all these pubs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was it you the can see what parrot? fueled our entire one. business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they started off really strong, by the third round, it was like I can't remember what we were talking about anyway. Yeah. Um, it was kind of we felt that we were all about experiences. So actually, just going into uh, being a floor within a multi-purpose building really wasn't going to work for us. Yeah. Obviously, that's changed. You know, WeWorks and Fora have done an amazing job in terms of changing that into a credible, you know, 
way ahead of the Regis of, of, of yesteryear. Um, secondly was that actually we felt if we could be in charge of our own destiny, um, and at that point we were starting to think about how we'd broaden our, our offering around um, startup, um, and then we'd have the space that we could do stuff with. Um, and then thirdly, we just felt actually we, we don't know where our journey is going to go, and we want to have space to adapt and adjust. Okay. And also we can we felt you know in that kind of naivety of youth that you know it's fine if we need to build we'd keep building if we don't we'll we'll find people who come and share our vision and, and be part of something. So how many I would floors say, can you go up? We can, we've got we've got <laughs> oh, we're planning on the permission yeah. <laughs> planning permission to build it as high as the shard BT Tower. <laughs> we've got we've got one more one more one more that we can go for. <laughs> And then uh, we're going to have to buy the pub and then move so over funny. there. Yeah. So, um, you can buy the pub. That's a great well, idea. Well, we've been trying it, to buy it for years. Have you? Yeah. I we spoke to them. It's Fuller's. And very we, sadly. We nearly moved to a pub, didn't we? we do you remember that? Yeah, we, remember. We, we actually found a pub that was, you know, a, a, was yeah, a great office. Yeah. You know? Well, they've so. got great accommodation. And it's one of those things you thought, well, actually, we could really look after. But again, going back to looking after everyone, is it's got great accommodation. So those people who are commuting in uh, or are traveling, got great space they could use from an accommodation perspective. Yeah. And then it always reminded my uncle, who, again, left school, was a bit of a family trait, left school with no qualifications, went into insurance, uh, ended up founding, they were sitting in a, a well-known insurance broker, and they, they've they got this band that no one wants to insure, it's a bit of a risk, and he was like, wow, that's really exciting. And he started his business, um, and he, he grew it to an incredibly successful insurance broker and you know, right. he'd always be turning up to family events, having been up all night with Madonna and Barry. Yeah. And, you know, for us, it was like, whoa. Anyway, the point of the story was that he was going out for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So he was like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going <laughs> to buy my own restaurant. <laughs> so he did that. He created this restaurant. It was an amazing restaurant, all this sort of memorabilia, and everyone was there, and everyone was literally going. Anyway, so after the first quarter, he sat down with his, his manager and said, so uh, how are we doing? And his manager was just like, it's an absolute shit show. And Will, he was like, well, what's going on? He said, well, you. He said, it's you. He said, but I'm bringing all these people in. It's amazing. He said, yeah, but you're going around and comping every single guest. <laughs> <laughs> we are losing so much money. This, it's not tenable. <laughs> so uh, it, was that, it was that kind of thought of the pub yeah. would be really good, but actually but, we know we'd be running our own tab. We know where we go for free drinks. Yeah, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and everyone would know the tab number quite quickly, so yeah. it would be a carnage. Yeah, so... So you're, um, and actually the other thing about where you are now is that that whole white city area, you've got a Soho house there now, yeah. you've got the flexible working there. In fact, um, a friend of mine, in fact, we've got a couple of clients actually yeah. in there, I've realised now mm. as well. So we've got a couple of clients in there. And I think, <clears throat> well, whilst we talked about the geography of regional, I think with the whole flexible working and, and uh. with the agile workforces, I mean, our previous guests also proved that. It's not maybe as critical, but there there is nothing that beats... I still think this, a client walking in <clears throat> to an office, you know, and mm. getting a, a feeling and a sense of scale. Do you agree? Is that well, I think question it's, it's, or not? Is that not uh, relevant? Because like, if they walk in on a Friday, right, there was a big thing recently, wasn't there, about Mediacom? Yeah, or yeah one doing of the four big days, agencies. four day. Yeah. But, but actually, no, no, well, no one being in the office on a Friday Starcom, is flexible. Yeah. yeah, Starcom, that's right. Sorry, you're right, Starcom. Yeah. And someone walks in the Friday and there was no one there and they were saying, oh, no one's there. Um, and that doesn't really does it really matter? You know, if they're flexible working, it's not a problem. But but do you think it still matters? But does it still help to have it? You know, when your clients come in to see your yeah. prospects. I mean, I I, I think <clears throat> I, um, I I feel it does, yeah. but um, only because I, you know I think we've all had it when you start businesses in front rooms, kitchen tables, sheds. You know, there's the imposter syndrome yeah. and that whole challenge for us when we're in the shed and they'd say, we'll come into your office and they'd look at us and they'd, yeah. they'd, our feeling was they'd see our work and our kind of thinking and then they'd come to this shed and go, okay, I'm not so sure about that. Yeah. And the mindset back then was very different. Yeah. Um, and I think that's when we started to pursue things like Sunday Times Best Companies to work for because that gave us sort of kind of you know, qualifications that yeah. they go, that you know validates the fact that they're a yeah. progressive, successful business. Yeah. And I still think it has value. I think people coming to your kind of, you know, we, what are our businesses? They're human capital. Yeah. Um, and really to have yes. a space where they can come and experience it and it's tangible. And I think it also it kind of validates everything else that they may feel. Because obviously if we're spending a lot of time on our clients' businesses, which we do more so than ever before, you know, you, it, it gets us assumed into their kind of cut. And it's really important yeah. they come and see what we're, the values. That, and I think if you're a value-based business, which a lot of agencies, you know, that's an important part of our yeah. DNA. They have to kind of see and experience it. And that yeah. you can obviously do that 
wherever you are. But actually being in, in, in the actual mothership, if you like, mm. is a really yeah. important part of that. Yeah, we, we had a chat not long ago, actually, because I think um, uh, the because you, you started off very much as one of the a classic brand ex- experiential yeah. business. So what sort of, for example, give me sort of projects that you would do um, now yeah, well, or back, well, then. back then? What was a yeah? I mean, of... I mean, I think some of the stuff we're most famous for is probably Smirnoff um, yeah. Original Nights, which you know everyone talked about. You know, everyone, every vodka producer had driven themselves into yeah. the ground. Uh-huh. So I'm saying it's a pure white, you know, clear, tasteless liquid. Yeah. And um, our challenge when they came to us was that you turn up at uh, mes- music festivals and you get a terrible serve, and it just really didn't stand for anything. So. Yeah. They talked about being clearly original, so we came up with this concept of creating clearly original nights that you couldn't get anywhere else. Yeah. And um, that was ultimately a massive global campaign that was hugely successful. Yeah. So but, all, um, is all of your work globally based? Yeah, we are. We, I mean, we, we have offices in Amsterdam, um, okay. uh, Lagos, which uh, hey, is another wow. story. Yeah. Um, and then we service, so we have a lot of Diageo workers, Johnny Walker's out of um, Singapore, Smirnoff's out of New York, yeah. and the whiskey's out of Amsterdam. Yeah. So we have a lot, of, a lot of traveling, but actually our belief is that we don't need to have local Johnny offices. Walker, did you hear that? That's Johnny good. Walker, there are other whiskeys available, but not as good. <laughs> yeah. I've got a list. Do yeah. you know, it's actually, um, it's Johnny Walker Blue, isn't it? The, that, was the, that was actually the whiskey that got me into whiskey. Mm. The blue, oh, is, oh, I know yeah. it's like really expensive, but it, it's really just good, so though. smooth, and it mm. and that. Uh, but yeah. So again, part anyway, of the innovation of how not I, that I drink much these days. <laughs> Sorry, I keep quitting. But any, keep quitting any, any, it's any, a joke. any gifts most okay. welcome. Um, and then I guess part of how our business has changed is Johnny Walk. One of the biggest issues yeah. is counterfeit. So oh, yeah, um, course, some of the yeah. work we've been doing is around fake stuff in the bottle. Yeah, and... is the innovation which is around creating a circuit around the cap. So when that Ooh. cap is broken. That circuit never really engages, so you can tell if it's um, counterfeit I came or up not. with that idea. Do you remember that? I came up with that idea about 10 years ago. I said they'll create connected, uh, what are the end bits called? Uh, yeah. I they'll do a connected right, thing yeah. and it will be have yeah. a sensor and it'll be able to set, tell the liquid's fake or yeah. not. We can also, we can use it to tell a story I can't, well. I've invented vitamin water. Oh, I mean, you've been so ahead of your time. All of these things. What are you thinking about right now? Seriously? Yeah. Are we going to say this? Yeah, I think so. So we... We, 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 it's, this is a ten Hold year the front page. Yeah, it's yeah. a ten year project, but we're going to. I might come to you for a bit of help because you did a lot of stuff with the craft. You did a lot of stuff with craft. We've we got craft beers. Craft, stuff. Yeah, we have. We have. A we're going to do yeah. craft marijuana. Nice for when it gets legalized. So local kind of niche areas, you know. Um, so it's it's a long way yet because it won't yeah. get legalized for a few years. But the idea is to perfect sort of you know local regional type. You know, unique. It's interesting. Ones. Yeah, a bit mm. different. Hydroponics as well. So yeah. we're very big into hydroponics anyway. So yeah, yeah that's going to be. But okay. it's a very post agency. You know, like it's. I mean, how long will it take to get legalized? Huh? I think it's going to be quite a long time. Yeah. I think the CBD. I mean, we the might whole, be very a, old. I know, but it'll be great for all of our illnesses <laughs> and stuff. Won't it? Yeah, when we're old, I, think, I, think need, I don't yeah. even smoke. It's really good for right? <laughs> but you don't need to. I mean, that, I think that's so. We're we're again we're probably help <laughs> from a, you know from an alcohol perspective. Yeah. Um, we've never worked um, cigarettes. we one of our clients is Cancer yeah. Research UK. So uh, we made a very clear stance from the early that we would never take any cigarette money. Yeah. Um, but oh, you're looking I like that. You're looking at CBD, yeah. um, and we're getting getting approached because you know there is going to how is how is the market going to evolve? You know, more less and less people are drinking alcohol. Yeah. Uh, if they are, they're drinking better quality. Uh, so our, we have a big challenge in terms of supporting a couple of our key clients uh, from that perspective. But also, we've got to look beyond that. So, yeah. you know, CBD I think is a really interesting area so yeah. in terms of medical. So I think again, also. the products around that is quite interesting as well because I've got mm. a friend who's got a a vegan cafe, and so she has like. CBD, CBD, yeah, yeah, and the you know the food and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's fascinating. I mean, I think, <laughs> yeah. and if you think about it, that whole, ultimately, we're a, we as a human race are trying to optimize ourselves and improve ourselves all the time. Mm. So we're getting to a point where we can actually, rather than just randomly throwing vitamins in and hoping that something's going to happen, yeah. rather than just your yeah. pea turn yellow, um, you know, we're 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 getting to a point where it's becoming technological and kind of other advances are allowing us to be much more targeted in terms of what we are doing and hopefully benefiting our bodies. Yeah. From. Actually, I have, I have a very non-agency related, but mm. maybe a bit technology related, but um, thing about vitamins, because I have been taking lots of vitamins recently. And I also, went, you know, Thriver, you can do those blood tests mm. where you go online and, you know, you go to the doctors, and it takes a week and yeah. they don't want to do it because it costs <laughs> money. Lucky. If we, if you're lucky, yeah. I mean, it's, it's four weeks to get an appointment yeah. and then you've got to speak to some, whatever it is, you know. So, so you get a Thriver. I'm going to, another name check. 
I feel like this is the sponsorship it's edition. Yeah. <laughs> um, we should actually have the wall. Can I just say, I mean, no, but advocacy is real, right? I'm yeah, not going to say this if they're right, but so you do the blood test and it comes back and it tells you, you know, hopefully everything's pretty good and it was. Um, but my, um, it said you need to see a doctor urgently. And I was like, oh, oh, unless you were taking vitamins, in which case stop. And so I'd been taking like these vitamins, like omega-3, and I've been taking vitamin B, and I've been doing an A to Z, and everyone had iron in it because they were uh, sort okay. of a bit multi. Yeah. So actually I've been taking too much iron. So I was actually, my organs are dying because it's like on the maximum thing. So, so actually it's quite, I think I love the way the whole internet has shifted and, mm. and changed and, and, and all of that stuff. This is nothing to do with agencies. No. Right? Yeah. Anyway. But you don't do things by half. <laughs> No, of course. Well, let's just this podcast. Well, this, this pod and vodcast is a three. I, I say it takes, it'll take three, it takes three years to get anything off the ground. So I think three years from now we'll finally get the format nailed, and, <laughs> and we'll be talking about tech, not agencies. No. Um, so, so going back to the story. So you're. Um, so, so I know what you do now, and yeah. then. And I do still want to get to the culture side of things. So how many people are you when you first move into the to the building? So we were about 35. And then 35 what was your peak? <clears throat> when did you get to your we most? We got to 220. 220. That's pretty It big. was chaos. Because it chaos. It was chaos. <laughs> so, so before, yeah, no, tell you what, we'll, we'll do it now because I think it's a good link. So yeah. tell me what, so what happens, because you, there, what year was it you got to 220? So ironically... Yeah, uh, and we're going to lead us on segues nicely into talking about working with my brother. But um, it was actually in 2010. Okay. Um, so the, the recession has kicked in, kicked in, and just and we're coming through. And, and uh, clients stopped was, spending money, but there were still new people. There was, there was a real sweet spot around actually in terms of experience, economy, and yeah, I think real that's real true, investment yeah. going in. And also uh, the irony there is it coincided with me being out of the business. <laughs> oh right. Because um, going back to my my back, I, I'd, I'd gone in for my third back operation in uh, in 2010. Yeah. So actually, and so I, when we first met, we actually so the first and this is this is yeah. probably something else that we we're going to do. Like when we're Ronnie Corbett, it feels like you know the two barkers where he used to go off and tell. But we actually met because we both sat on the board of the MAA. That's right. In, which is now the MAAG, uh, which we're still both involved with and promote. And so that was 2008. And I just remember. And then we both met in the supper club because we were members there. In fact, a couple of guests have been members of the supper club. Mm. And we, but you always used to be standing up all the time yeah. in, in those meetings. And I was always, I never really knew the backstory then. No, but, I mean, but yeah. Obviously, I mean, you're going through a bad period then. Yeah. It's, it's unfortunate that it'll never be right. Um, I still have to have weekly treatment, I have to do lots of exercise. But that in that period of time before the operation in 2010, I couldn't sit for more than 20 minutes. So I had lots of meetings lying down. Yeah. Um, which again now everyone go that's really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, back then it was like what's well, a sign of what are you doing? You know why aren't you why can't you sit at the table and host yeah. it? And I'm not the... I'm not not necessarily pushing this. Yes, but have you read You Are the Placebo by no. Dr. Joe Dispenza? No, I mean no. I'm not too sure. Like it's not everyone's cup of tea, but he tells a the, the, yeah. you've read it as well. Yeah, yeah. The story Great. at the beginning about his back is incredible. Is it? He gets run over on a cycling accident. And he heals himself. And he talks about how he did it. It's a heebie-jeebie. But actually, it's quite fascinating. So it might be worth reading that story. Yeah. I mean, not that... You know, no, I mean, I, I think you've got... Details, the, the point in there is that, um, unfortunately, the, the, the first mind, operation, you know, the mind plays a big... So yes. if you if you break an arm, you know, it's yeah. it's 70% uh, healing yeah. and 30% what happens to you. With your back, yeah. it's 70% head yes. and brain. And he was an osteopath. I think so. Yeah. yeah. So actually, he said yeah. no's the operation. He said I'm going to do this. And yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, I bet the reality is, unfortunately, our backs haven't really adjusted from us walking in all fours. No. So and our increasingly sedentary lifestyle does yeah. not help. Yeah. Um, but in yeah, so in, tell uh, us about it. We're prior to down all day yeah, just, day. Yes. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Quick group stand up. Uh, so keep that, your posture. Three years from now, I bet you we're st we're doing this standing yeah. stand up vodcast. Yeah. Stand up yes. vodcast. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be the UK's only stand up vodcast. Only so that's our niche. Keep continuing to push it forward. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I had that. It was a real so, challenge. Yeah. I mean, again, I think the um, the reality. So you were out of the business, and you had two all these people. Yeah. So you had a leadership team running it, I guess. Leadership running it, and um, the reality was that. Uh, it, our system, we, we we were we were fine in terms from a client perspective, but actually, our culture and the values that we'd set out, which was all about looking after everyone, we we just we didn't, and we didn't know everyone's name. You know, it was that classic yeah. classic scenario, and it was incredible. I mean, it was a right right amazing ride that you know I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah. But it also we found that actually being a sustained 
independent business at that size without continuing on that trajectory yep. in a, an environment and a kind of, I guess, a sector of the marketing mix that was largely project based yep. uh, was really challenging. Yeah. Yeah, because projects end and you can never yeah. get them to time. You've yeah. got the wages to pay and the work. And then also you don't know whether it's coming. Yeah. We, I mean, we, we, you know, it's changed a lot now, but you've... You lose you didn't, the client. Yeah, you got and you, well, say so it didn't necessarily lose. We, 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 no, yeah. I'm lucky to say we never really lost yeah. clients. They just stopped spending yeah. or they would pull out of a particular partnership or sponsorship and then uh, the whole strategy would change. And I think that's one of the challenges is that the, the, the marketing world and the, and the real world, obviously they hugely connected, but actually in reality, when somebody comes into a new role, we've got increased churn in marketing professionals, and they go, well, the first thing we look at changing is pack, brand, uh, and marketing. And so, you know, a lot of brands end up doing this terrible zig and zag when the consumer's going, well, I'm just getting used to this particular yeah. connection and yeah. property, and then they change it. So, again, that sort of uh, is long-term sustained growth yeah. is really challenging so 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 what happened then so you got this 250 and then the because there's a story around the culture and what happened to it like yeah but you lost your way a little we bit. just we just lost our we, yeah. yeah um and again i we speak, and what were the signs of that happening just um I mean, really basic stuff you know invoice i mean it's just it was all yeah. of our it was a classic growth where yeah. all of our systems were groaning yeah. and creaking and it was like a you know one of those sort of cartoon with a big water tower and they're kind of rivets are shooting off left, yeah. right and centre. And you go, right, something's fire. happening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, and it was that sort of point where we're going, actually, we'd, we'd been really driven by just growth. And again, it goes back to the metric success and that for us was success. But we would, we'd kind of shelved the reality of which was looking after our people. And that was going back to our founding principle and saying, if we lose that, We've kind of lost everything we stand for, and we'll just be a, another agency. Well, I guess that was really important to you, coming from the agency that you'd come from. And that was Absolutely. the reason you'd left in the first yeah, place. Yeah, we'd gone full circle, yeah. and we needed to break that cycle. Yeah, so you'd become, I want to be that eighties <laughs> yeah. agency. Yeah, you know. yeah. we stand still long enough; it all yeah. comes yeah. back round. So we got those yeah. guys on as non-execs. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I think that was also part of the, the journey was going. Actually, what what do we all want from this? Um, and ironically, having time out of the business, you know, my brother was amazing in the leadership team, and they, they switched me off um, completely from the office. So when did your brother come in then? Was he not? Because I, I always thought he, I just assumed he was there at the beginning. No, he, um, do, he, um, he he um, he he uh, brilliantly was hired by our commercial director at the time, right. who came in to tell me he'd hired my brother. <laughs> well, you can't like, hire because that would be nepotism, yeah, wouldn't exactly. it? Really. So, so I said that's exactly what I said. So as long as it's yeah. on a meritocracy, that's fine. Yeah. And he said, no, I think he's, he's really got something. So he started working for us in the field. Uh, so again, really got to know the business uh, from that perspective and then came into the office and then yep. started to work it. So he's really worked hard to get to where he's got yeah. to. Um, and I think going back to our right at the beginning of the story where circling back, where you, you know, that challenge of leaving an agency to set up on your own, you know, yep. ripping the lifeblood out of a, an agency, having your brother and, you know, if he was there as the founder, CEO and, and managing director, it's an amazing dynamic because culturally, you know, we're very different people, but culturally we're very aligned. Yeah. And I think that also means that actually you've got more people who are subscribed to the same vision and ambition yeah. so that you have less reason to be concerned with someone going, actually, I'm really hacked off with this. I'm going to go and do my own thing and then take a client out of the agency to go and do that. So so with the journey, um, are all the original founders still there or do they all go at no. certain points? So the business outgrew them at certain points what they yeah. wanted and what happened yeah. Yeah, yeah was that easy to deal without going into detail was that a, was that a hard thing to deal with because no. i think we find it quite a lot sometimes where there's two founders you know one person's maybe more let's say i mean i don't know if i can really stereotype it but one founder let's say wants to stay small and the other one's really ambitious and resolving that it's quite we find quite a lot of conflict trying to resolve that just being open honest yeah. about what you want and you know, is that totally? I mean, it's the one thing I say to everyone is, um, you know, so now, uh, Dom and I we spend a lot of time talking, and a lot of it is out of the office, so we do walk and talk. Yeah, and uh, walk and talk nice. is just no yeah. fixed agenda, but we'll yeah. do a uh, period of time talking about the office and work, and then the other is just doing other stuff. Um, and that's the one regret I had is that when things were not going as we all hoped, we kind of Went, rather than coming together and going, well, let's talk about this and let's work through it, yeah. we kind of said, actually, we're really busy, so we'll just kind of build our fiefdoms and just do our thing, and then we're effectively running you know, two separate businesses, and it was just chaos, and our business stood still for that period of time. Yeah. And uh, we then also, you're looking at yourself going, actually, we're, we're again, we're going back to this, we're going back to the old agency. We're not living the values that we set out. And that's when we did a, another 
piece of the jigsaw which was saying actually rather than having values they feel you know quite inert and it's kind of you know it sort of sits on a on a, on a wall or a shelf and we then change the behaviours. Poster in the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a very good space for media. Really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, we uh, we talked about behaviours because actually behaviours are the manifestation of stuff we do every day. So we can judge people against behaviours. Uh, values feels a bit more tenuous. And uh, it was one of the most important things of of I learned was actually not sticking your head in the ground because it's only and we one of the behaviours we have is run towards the fire. Okay. Unless it's a real fire, then get out of the building. But yeah. the running towards the fire. If you run away from it or you ignore it, it's only going to get bigger. Yeah. It's only going to get out of control. So actually, by yeah, going really towards like it, dealing with yeah. it, um, it then puts you in a very good position. So for us, um, I didn't do that enough, and the business suffered. So our kind of you know brutal honesty around how we communicate with each other in a managed, you know, constructive because yeah. obviously, like your good self, taking criticism is not the easiest of things to do, but it's also for the greater good. And actually, our values in our business. I mean, I, I would say it's easy for me to say, but I would say core tenants of when people come and work in RPM, work with RPM, um, they talk about the honesty and it's a it's a very clear, you know, we are very open and transparent yeah. with how we're doing, what our ambition is, how we work with people. And I think that engenders right through the business. So going back to the behaviours, we can call <coughs> people out very quickly if they're yeah. not doing what we are looking to expect. So you know when we, whenever we meet, we always have good chats about agency life and he and and Hugh always goes, I feel they're really cathartic, you know, like this is yeah. kind of like, because there's a, <laughs> so, so I'm really good at taking criticism, but it has to be from somebody who understands everything about what I'm doing. Because a lot of people come to me and say, oh, you know, you work too hard, you're too busy. And I'm like, but you don't know the context. You don't, yeah, know, you're, you're not, not being, but you're not as successful. And you understand there's a level of momentum that happens with working hard. And, you know, then you work smart and, you know, I'm busy, yeah. but I'm actually working quite smart. But it's just, you know, you don't see that. I mean, it's really difficult. I mean, people and it's, are... so someone's sort of telling me stuff. And I'm like, okay. And that's why I get a bit annoyed. But I don't mind. When we talk, it's great because it's, yeah, but... it's you know, there's a level of, you it's know. respect. I mean, yeah, it's done in a respectful sort of. way. And I think that's part of the challenge is people, you know, it's very easy to criticise. And actually, yeah. the, the, the other side of criticism is actually objective advice because we're all, if you're in a business, you know, you're working. And we all talk about working on your businesses, but really in agency world, you're in your business. Mm. And um, criticism, actually, objective perspective is invaluable yeah. because yes. people see stuff that you may not necessarily pick up on. And I yeah. think the that, you know, totally. the, the relationship is really important, but it comes yeah. from respect and yeah, totally. you know, lack of knowledge. People will say lots of stuff, and you go back to why RPM yeah. is still here. You know, we talk about actions speak louder. Yeah. You know, people say lots of stuff, brands say lots of stuff, people say lots of stuff, yeah. but actually, it's those that do it. Yeah, win through every time. Yeah, exactly. So it's always a lot of people say what they think, isn't it? It's not what you think and what mm. you know, and you know. Yeah, and it's but, and it's easy. The, the yeah. advancement of you know, we can we can post all sorts of stuff out there, and you know, we don't have to deal with the consequences. Yeah. It's it's a different different game. Yeah. So you're so you so you you've hit this peak and then yeah. things everything's cracking and you know I guess there's probably many times through an agency journey we see um, the processes start. We, we work with an agency um, who last year had a you know just a step change. They, they just grew from let's say you know two to three million. All the processes broke overnight and um, and then and then we we went in there and. And it's like, you know, you think you've got it right and then it all goes wrong, yeah, Pete, doesn't yeah. it? So there's there's many, another step change. There's yeah. another. And it's so you, sometimes you think you've got it nailed and then it breaks again. And so, you know, yeah. it, it just happens that way. But so it's gone wrong. So then, so what were the consequences of that? What what really, because you said you didn't lose any clients. But no, what, what, but we just, we did, we'd lost, we'd lost, it? we'd lost momentum. We'd lost the kind of energy. And yeah. I think the kind of North Star. Yeah. We just, we just, we just, we're just so busy, vision, and yeah. and we I like and that North Star. I North Star is good, really, yeah, uh, you know, being a country lad. I like the North Star because it <laughs> yeah. gives you a sense of uh, the kind of clutter of buildings and glass. And you know. I think I can tell the North Star when I look out my back door at night because I live in Hampshire, country that's <laughs> quite dark. But I'm not it's sure if it's the space station because the space station is also really bright in the <laughs> or, sky, um, the and you see Elon that Musk um, satellite. <laughs> yeah, that's now. Seen that? one of them is really bright. And sorry, I mean Simon is here; he'd probably correct me. I'm sure he's good at this. Strong. You probably can't see it. You can't. Yeah. See it. I mean, like, yeah, probably can't see it in London so easily. I've got, so, the, I've got the plow outside my back door actually, which is really nice. It's nice. like it's quite. It's something quite grounding. It's calming. Yeah, you walk out and you see it. It is ground. It's grounding. You go, okay, I'm in the right place. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, it goes back to your point. You're also talking about regional, regional versus London. Yeah. I mean, Do you, you have know. stars in London? Huh? Do you have stars yeah. in London? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
We have plenty of them. Uh, yeah. Probably far too but you many. You know, like you have like stars in the sky. Yeah, we do. Yeah. In light pollution. I mean, Shepherd's Bush it. is very, it's very dark out there. You can yeah. see almost anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, true. So. Actually, there's no lying in Shepherd's Bush. <laughs> <laughs> I find, um, I'm, it is. It's one of the things I really don't like. Actually, is light pollution because I, 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 you know, I'm noticing it now because they're talking. You know, as the nearby town gets built, it gets lighter in the dark sky. You know, it's, yeah. it's a shame. Man. But and people talk about you know environmental and sustainability and all the different things that you know need to be improved in the world but actually the light pollution light for me is a big thing yeah it's a really big thing as well so um so, yeah. so, so it all started getting a bit unhinged and did you start losing people? unhinged i'm not sure i would say unhinged oh, okay. but it just we'd lost well, the bolts <laughs> flying off the wall sounded a bit un- unhinged so, okay okay so the wheels were slowly coming off but they weren't off <laughs> they weren't completely they were just did a bit you of have a high staff turnover because in london it yeah. is quite high like all the reports you know there's lots of age lots of did that start to yeah go I mean, I, th- I think agency life is really tough. Uh, yeah. And, you know, if, if, if you have your time that's again... Why, that's why we don't do another agency. <laughs> I totally agree. I mean, I, I, like it's, it, one of the, it's one of the... I mean, I think I, we, we do a lot of um, work experience. So, again, I know, like, you're talking, obviously, about Catlin. You know, we do, we do a lot of placements for people who, obviously, we know is through a network, but then we do about uh, 60% for those that come from no network, so inner city, uh, working okay. with the Lord Mayor's Fund. <laughs> And uh, that is really, really, like that. That's really, really, nice, really yeah. important because ultimately it's very structured. It's not about coming in and making tea and coffee and photocopying, whatever the modern equivalent of that it might be. Yeah. Um, it's really structured so they get to spend time. And the change in a week is amazing from some of these individuals who are coming who've never been in a place of work. They probably don't have any, any uh, role models within their no, family. No point of reference. No point of reference. No, no. So they, they come yeah. in, you know, a lot of time unaware of what implications of being late or on time or yeah. communicating. So it's, you know, it's, it's a start, but it's really important. And I, I think the churn, you know, we're competing against everyone from Facebook. And everyone is m- sort of consolidated into this, just looking for good talent. Yeah. And it, that's one of the reasons why we've dialed up this kind of the good years, you know, the best years in terms of our initiative around looking after our people. Because it's one of the ways we can compete. You know, we can't compete against the likes of Google and Facebook. But we can culturally Yep. And uh, I think the churn, you know, we, we, we went through all sorts of things around our ownership. We opened the business up to everyone. Everyone was a shareholder, a bit like Andy Law. I don't know if you remember Andy Law went to St. Luke's. And he wrote this amazing, it made everyone, everyone was a shareholder. Everyone decided each other's salary. And yeah. uh, it was a really, really interesting experiment. And we did that. So you literally, what, created an option scheme yeah. and just and it was distributed just, it, it was out. chaos <laughs> again in the sense that uh, it wasn't particularly motivating because we didn't have an end point. We weren't looking for an exit. And secondly, was it, then, it wasn't was it done as like a, an LLP or they, did they all work for themselves? It, 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 no, it's an employee trust. <coughs> oh, it's yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. EOTs yeah, yeah. are getting really popular yeah. now. Actually, and, and, you know, so you've been through agencies. it. So you did you have a back? So just summarize. Was it about in the end? Was it not the right thing? Or it, it, uh, um, it was the right thing in terms of the sentiment of what we were trying to do. Yeah, but it didn't do. It didn't. It didn't pull the right levers in terms of people weren't motivated by it. Yeah. And actually, we then had people staying who we probably didn't want to necessarily I'm, stay. I think we should do when we do our next event. I might tap you up to come and talk about that, and we do pros and cons about it. Because yeah, I think we were talking about doing something around yeah, general. It comes up a fair bit. Now, it does M and A, and especially around yeah. M and A, people maybe the older owners, much older than you. Um, Much older. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, when, 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 when London yeah, yeah. owners, so we, sometimes we, we're going into people who, who are looking, maybe they're, you know, they're looking towards the retirement side. And it's like, what are they? Do they sell it? But if it's lifestyle. Well, it's, some, it's an option for a lot of them, isn't it? Because they want to hand something on to the next generation. Mm. So it often comes up as a, what if we did this? And the EOT is something that yeah. is yeah. a vehicle that works really well for that. So I and don't. It just seems to be on, the, we've just seen it come up more like yeah. in the last yeah, two I years mean, it's uh, gaining more and i pace. don't personally know someone who's been been through it so that, yeah that'd be really i mean i think there's me, much think. there's 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 better i mean again it goes back to what's your north star what are you trying to do and yeah. we weren't trying to exit the business we were trying to legacy is too strong a word yeah, you're we not saying to, eot was wrong you're saying that maybe the business the, actually, yeah, yeah. And, well actually we need, we need churn is a good thing yeah. Uh, as in good churn as opposed to bad churn yeah. you know? so we we need to just keep momentum moving around it and actually you know, if we're not walking towards a, a, an exit or an event of what that might be, then everyone's kind of yeah. go, well, where's the benefit really yeah, going to come we, from? We're just so, drifting. Yeah. So yeah. actually, your staff turnover gone down to like almost zero then? Now? It's near. Yes. <laughs> so where's your good churn? Now? But no, no, it's right. still, it's still, it's, it's still, uh, it's still a good. I, I think good churn is. It's when they say churn, it's a really Posi- difficult, positive, it's a positive churn. churn. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I think. Um, I think it's a good thing, and some people's careers have got to 
move You've got on. to progress. Yeah. And some people want to do things differently. Like but you know, that, you right? know, you've had the same. I used to when someone come in and say they resign, I was like, I was like a stab to the heart. I go, what do you mean? We haven't yeah. got the answer for you here. Why haven't we got the answer for you here? We're doing all this amazing stuff, and and then it was the dawning of reality, which is actually is that we can't be all yeah. things, and actually they have got to go. And you you move around, and you then change stuff, and and you adapt and move yeah. on. I was okay with that quite quickly because I did invest in people. <laughs> And investing mm. people's philosophy was when someone works for you, they're, they, you know, you're, and that Steve Jobs talk about during the, you know, they're just, you know, you're helping them get to where they want to get to in life. It sounds, and, yeah, and this is a lot, quite a long yes, time ago. Like, we had that part of the journey, not the destination. Yeah. Yes. And we were like, we were, we said, look, we want so you to stay philosophy, here. Yeah. And we hope, yeah. Strings to my life. Zen, my, my Zen master colleague. <laughs> um, he only turns up one in six. <laughs> <laughs> I still think this is the first one. <laughs> It's the first proper one. Philosophy. Everyone's Pete, gonna, Pete, the philosophy. Say, everyone's going to email in and go, that was the best episode. And I'm going to go, oh, I've only had great. one. I'm just going to have to quit, right? And then can take over. So, um, so, so the, uh, where were we? No, but I think in terms of the churn, I think you're um, right. We don't, we don't have this. And actually yeah. what, you know, that, that was the change for me saying we can actually, so we talk about best years in terms of if you're with us for a week, for a month or for 13, 14, 15 years, then you should leave us better informed, better developed, personally and professionally so that you go That's on really as a result of it yeah and you know if, actually if you talk to the people about rpm they will they will often talk about the fact that it's a you know there's a bar that's set very high in terms of yeah. our expectations and skill set but also there's a certain caliber of individual that comes out and you know we have got people who have old rpm as the the academy rpm academy we've got people running agencies we've got people who've done incredibly yeah. well and yeah. You know, it's a bit of me, you know, on a dark grey Monday morning, you go, that's frustrating. In reality, it's got to be for the greater good. Yeah, yeah, you I have mean, to be proud. We, we, we look back at the Blue Halo, there was someone found an old photograph of Blue Halo and the team, which is quite funny, when the barn Black like, and white one. And actually, we went through it. <laughs> Grainy. But we went through it. Sepia. We went through it. And like, you know, we, I don't know if I said it well, okay, but Simon used to work for me. He's in the background over there. And now I work for him. Right. And yeah. so... Actually, when I look at that, you know, I'm super proud of it. He, you know, Absolutely. I mean, apparently, he just only shared this with me earlier. He's got no mic over there, I don't think. But he shared the story with me earlier on where he said, actually, I said to him, one day you need to go do a business like this. And it, I didn't say, you've got to stay with me for life. As, and I think when we look back at that picture, we looked at the other day and it was like, you know, there's, there's you know, the, the creative team now have their own agency. Um, one of the posters is very senior at Google. I mean, these and they were graduates yeah. with us. We go through and, and I'm really proud of the that playing a part in their journey. I think you should be. And I think yeah. that's, that's really, uh, again, it goes back to the kind of ethos around your business. And yeah. Ultimately, the Illumini is, is something. Yeah. Do you have an Illumini now with the RPM? Or? <laughs> we keep thinking about is it, it. Is it dangerous? It's is dangerous? it like, you know? You know yeah. well, there's a few skeletons in there. Yeah. But I, th I think it's, 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 it is that sense of, and I, you know, where, where recently you, talk, you touched on the climate and um, XR, Extinction Rebellion wrote an open letter to our industry saying, you know, you are some of the best communicators we have. You are persuading people to buy stuff that they may or may not need. Yeah. Can you help us communicate around the climate change yeah. um, or climate emergency? And it's really interesting when you start to explore actually how we can use what we do yeah. for a longer term and actually critical yeah. um, while dealing with the short term. So um, I, I think it's a really, really, you know, we're, we're an amazing position. Yeah. We're an amazing industry. Yeah, and I think that Pete and I, I mean, our next uh, big agency nomics event, plug, um, in April, in fact, we haven't even put the, the list up, but it's going to be called Agency for Good. Because I, I, what I've witnessed, I mean, obviously I was in my agency for, you know, 11 years. I didn't really get to maybe go into other businesses, but mm. and other agencies on volume like we have today. But actually... I think the tech industry and the agency industry are real leaders in innovating culture. Um, the, you know, like a lot of things like flexible working, all of, you know, the tech guys have been doing that for 20, 30 years. You know, that's not mm. a new thing. And the, um, you know, agencies do a lot of good. Like you, you talk, I mean, when Gyro bought my business, they used to get people um, who were ex-convicts, yeah. who basically did, what, needed the chance to get a job. They'd end up in prison because they were young kids on the street. And then they would go in and they would actually did, they did reading. They would help do like reading lists. And the, like, there was so much good stuff. And you've, you've got a great story there as well. And agencies for good is, it's weird, but I know you shouldn't show off about sometimes the good things you do, right? It's right. just there. It's innate. It's in there. But actually, I think the world needs to know that 
we're not just this advertising agency marketing business, you know, yeah. where we're all a bunch of whatever it is, mad men. Actually, genuinely, most of those businesses are helping the world become a better place. And that isn't just cheesy line. It really is, mm. right? The way we... No, I, think you've hit, I think you've really hit on yeah. something. I mean, it's, it's part of the challenges that are, in advertising, advertising is a sort of monocle for all marketing, but is, you know, at its lowest point in terms of trust. Yes. And we have a real challenge. There's a real tension in marketing and marketing communications yeah. in terms of the influencers and everything else in terms of what is a bona fide messages and how you can ensure that they are validated truthfully. And um, I, I think agency for good is very strong. And lots of people would say, though, an agency for good, you've got to be yeah. right at the other end of the spectrum. Because yeah, because a lot of the people going, oh, I deal with charities. I deal not for not-for-profits. I want to come to your event and speak. Mm. And, like, it's not, and, and that's good. There's a lot of great around that. But it's actually, you know, I like it. Also, I like the story where people go into, like, Shell or, or an oil company, BP, and actually go, oh, it's an oil company. But actually, they're doing a lot of really good stuff because they understand about renewables as well. Yeah. And I love your point yes. about the cigarette thing because Cancer Research was one of our largest clients as mm. well. And um, and we, I always said, look, if you smoke, you can work on the account if you don't have a moral. But I, I, but I, but I, it was a choice Attention. thing. Yeah. But actually, um, is that... Is there any other sectors you just quickly you wouldn't work with? I'm always curious to know. No, uh, well, I mean, our, I mean, our, I mean, environmental now does that environmental I mean, so, we're, we're, so I guess you, you know, people are not not turn the line. They can't be clients because you've got to take some stuff, or then you help them be better. Yeah, I think that's part of our. You know, we're, we're communicators, so let's rather than just blockading and saying no, yeah. let's actually work out. So mm. the purpose um, disruptors, which is a response to the um, extinction rebellion letter. There's an interesting again back to the second back about the independence versus groups you know the independence i feel can be more responsive we're a bit more in charge of our destiny i'll give than some of the network and group agencies and it's interesting to see how we can help you know bring this to the fore because the reality is we're all you know it feels a bit like we're fiddling while rome is burning in yeah. the sense that you know we're talking and david attenborough is now coming out you know we, we have got real life tension yeah. and you know our earlier generations had world wars uh, Cuba, you know, they had all sorts, and we our one is is climate, yeah. and it is a real challenge when we are still trying to trade through some of the most interesting, exciting, but challenging trading conditions that we've yeah. ever seen. And education, I think, is really important in that area mm. because I was talking to someone yesterday, um, and just who was explaining to me they just turned vegan because they wanted to do their bit to help the environment, and then I said, "Where are you on holiday?" <laughs> <laughs> on an airplane, and I was like. <laughs> You know, and it didn't realise. Thought it was, you know, thought it was public transport. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I think there's a definitely an education oh, thing. It's but, really difficult. I mean, everyone talks but about. There's a movement though, right? There there is a there's a little thing that's kind yeah. of. You and know, it starts. It starts with little changes. Yeah, uh, you know, I totally, with, totally agree with that. And and, yeah. and I think that's when Sky. You know, yeah. Sky has been a long-standing client for us, and they removed all single-use plastic from their business and yeah. from supplies. So we have taken that out of our business and. It's it's they're, they're small changes, but then again, yeah. the part of the misinformation is you go well, you remove single single use plastic, but then everyone goes to paper, yeah. and then actually paper. Where's paper come from? Trees, trees. You know, yeah. trees ultimately are the key to the future. Yeah. One of the key levers levers for pulling in terms of better climate um, quality, air quality, and so you know, it's, there's a real challenge around what what people you know trying to simplify it and give people really straightforward clear steps that they can do so you know around yeah. flight i mean it's people don't make the connection necessarily we we just we just done some tree planting haven't we we have yeah, yeah. we yeah. um signed up to offset earth yeah have you heard of offset earth i have it's very good yeah. so yeah. actually rob here is he one of the founders yeah i think yeah. he's one of the founders actually mm. rob oh, that's good. yeah so um so that's been really really and it's just yeah, a great, it's great idea you know just yeah. uh it's i mean i think it's you know your... we're getting to i mean glasgow talking obviously about cop 26 in uh, the end of the year in glasgow which is Big opportunity to bring all of the head of the head of the um, the countries together to actually thrash out what we can do in terms of legislation and otherwise. And Glasgow is aiming to go carbon neutral as a city, wow. as a city, yeah, by twenty thirty, which is an incredibly ambitious yeah. plan. Um, we have a client just outside Birmingham, and they're about to literally close off the whole centre of Birmingham to transport, which I think yeah. is quite a brave move, yeah. um, you know, for commercially. Um, but you know, there's obviously. But we have a lot to evolve. We have to. Ch we have yeah. to change. What we're doing. We can't continue. I, mean, I, I drive it. an electric car, and the thing that I want the most is I want to stand in central London and not hear noise pollution mm. because I think the noise pollution. As long as you don't do it in the middle of the road and get hit by the sun yeah. of an electric car. 
which actually is <laughs> yeah. a problem. Driving a silent car, you have to be really aware yeah, that people sometimes walk out of it. But but yeah. it's um but I I mean I I think they should still probably allow electric cars to go into centres because I think that, I mean the taxis are going now, which is fantastic as yeah. well. I'm leaning away from the microphone. I better lean back in. I can hear I'm going quiet. Lean in, lean in, um, lean in. And so 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 what did you do to fix fix the culture when when it got to the point? Then it's like going wrong. What was the so you went back to basics? Went back to basics, and uh, I think I always talk about HR. Um, I mean, it starts with the founders. And do you have a head, head of talent or yeah. someone that takes and ownership of that? We had amazing. And, uh, you know, a lot of people I talk about every time we do an offsite, you know, everyone talks about human remains in terms of HR. And I think historically that's probably true. There was a lot of just it, it was about process and it kind of sucked the emotion and the energy and it was just simply dealing with procedure. Yeah. Um, and uh, Gillian, uh, I had a time, also head of people, has really... We've is that the about, title, Head of People? I always, yeah, Head of yeah. People, because okay. we've, talk, we've talked about, you know, there's lots of titles, and again, it's... HR's the worst one. It's, it's HR, <laughs> and my initials are HR, so it's not oh, helpful. Yeah. So uh, no. it's one of those things that we, we talked about the best years, and we'd never really got a sort of how that manifested and lots of initiatives, and Gillian's done an amazing job. So we've gone everything from coaching, uh, you know, which is a lot of people want to have instantaneous feedback in terms of how they're doing rather than waiting for a moment in time, Yeah. you know, which regardless of what has happened nine months ago, it will probably be dominated by what has happened most recently. So um, that real sort of, sort of, I guess, harnessing of the framework around, you know, best years has given us, you know, all of the initiatives, you know, we've got around in. Now our ambition is taking that on. So we announced the company, we haven't gone public on this yet, but we are talking about B Corp in terms of how so we away, then... So are we. That's really, I, mean, I think, again, you know, it's important, really yeah. important statement. You see, here we go. Um, so with the agency for a good event, we've already got, I think, one completed B Corp person and a couple a couple that are going through it midway. So we we're going to try and share lessons. And, uh, oh, great. yeah, why? Yeah. So I'm just getting a little away from Simon. I, think, I thought your time was up, but actually, no. So uh, why have a going through it as well? But again, it's the tech businesses and agencies I've seen really pushing through yeah. on that. So no, I think it's I think it's a really exciting and uh, I think again it's about being part of a community and it's a really good community that are trying to yeah. continually evolve and push things forward. So we've got to be part of that really. And it makes sense, really. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's you know putting the biz, putting you know the, the purpose and and you know, first before profits. I mean, I love Patagonia, you know, it's like, we're here to save the planet. Oh, and by the way, we happen to make you know, yeah. clothing as well, you yeah. know, and it's just a fantastic it's way really, to, yeah. to do business, really. It's got real robust. I mean, I think it's it's uh, it's also for the long term. I think a lot of our yeah. sh- uh, focus has become much shorter term and actually, you know, we can't afford to do that anymore. Yeah. So. so two things I want to talk to you about. Yes. Um, first of all, why why do you belong, why do you get involved with trade bodies? Like, like you, you, you were on the board of the MAA, yeah, or the MAA G. Um, I turned up again, and you were there again. <laughs> that was the half festival of happiness. Uh, yeah, but you came to one of the board meetings as well, didn't you? Uh, no, oh, no you were no, a meeting before. Meeting before. But why do you, why do you involve with other trade bodies now? Yeah, well, because I think it's important. It goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. ultimately, um, you know, our, 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 our North, you meet good people. You meet excellent people. <laughs> you get a lot of good ideas. <laughs> Sorry. And you connect, and also, uh, you know, very basic. You get out of your business, um, which is a good thing, um, and you connect with people. Um, again, it's kindred spirits, isn't it? Yeah. But also, the other the other part of that is that uh, we have to, you know, if you've been around as long as we have, um, we can help other people learn from yeah. the mistakes that we've made. And also, I believe that we should put as much in as we've taken. Yeah. So we've benefited from this incredible industry. We should continue to help others benefit from yeah. it. And, um, and, and I think that's a winning. I think for me, that's the the, the winning mindset. I mm. mean, I I listened to um, a lot of Peter Drucker stuff recently yes. because he was like the king of. Well, I thought he was the king of the hierarchies and stuff, and that the management consultant of the twenty. Yeah, he's a guy that said culture Trump yeah, strategy, exactly. right? So, and actually, I, I read and listened. Well, actually, it was an audio book because they converted them all to audio book, and I listened to it. And and so it was fascinating. At the end, he he said actually said you know he believed that flat structures were were better than hierarchies, which I didn't expect because, you know, you used to work with HP and have 100 layers. Mm. But the second thing he said was, he said, at the end of the day, mindset trumps everything. Because he said, it doesn't matter what the strategy is and what the culture is, if the mindsets aren't right, you know, ultimately. And I think, you know, the mindset of giving, you know, mm. it is, and I think Adam Grant wrote a book called yeah. Give and Take, where he said the most successful people in the world are givers, but they're paying it forward, the karma. And I think 
Karma, yeah, karma, I think karma is fundamental how you should run your business. You know, treat yeah. others as you would ha treat others as you have, have them treat yeah. you. I'm, I'm learning that now. Yeah. I'm, I've really been reading there's, a list and of stuff on karma. Never and too late. Karma it's and never I'm too late. Like, yeah. And I, th I think it's a, and also, it's, no, I think it's a realization. <laughs> <laughs> so we, no, as Wisdom. you get older, you start to see actually. You know, you just yeah, start to see I, more of yeah. it as well. I think there's a there's a word which I hate because it's really difficult to say. But reciprocity. Yeah, reciprocity. Reciprocity. Yeah, reciprocity. We, I, we live our lives by that. Yeah, and it's that exchange. And I, and yeah. I think in our world... Without expecting it, though. You just yeah. help and, you know. Yeah, it, and it all comes around. And I think yeah. if you believe that, it goes back to when you lose good talent, you kind of go, all right, that's really frustrating. But actually, play it in the best possible way and the good for, for good intentions around it, then ultimately, you know, it's, it's a much better... And, and someone wrote a brilliant article the other day about, you know, why when leavers go, you should leave on a real high because actually, you know the new business survey, which you kindly filled stuff out yeah. in. And we did you ever see it, by the way? Uh, yes, we did. There is a snapshot yeah, of you in it. it voted. You, you, no, it's all right. You said all of our business comes from referrals. Yeah. And actually, the one silver bullet that came out of the report was... That just under fifty percent of all AC business still comes from a referral of some some description, and so um, I just lent out the microphone. I think I might have gone a bit quiet. Sorry, everybody. Uh, and, less relief. Yeah, and so um, yeah, <laughs> less me. I'm not shouting in your ears. Sorry. Um, and so uh, I've really lost my train of thought now. I'm just about referral. On. Referral. Yeah. So um, so the so the reciprocity and the, and the but also when people so when people leave someone wrote a blog article I don't know who it was but they said you've got to really look after the employees when they go because actually in our one of our biggest clients had two million pound deals this year referred from team members from the people they'd worked with before in yeah. different types of agencies and I think too often people leave under a cloud and there's not you know it, it's so important yeah, actually yeah. not. Just to rule out what happens if someone goes. Well, I mean, I don't go. think you can. You know, your care, your care, your societal care, but also your care to employees doesn't stop when they when they're yeah. longer employees. So you know, as an Absolutely. employer, it, and also it's an ecosystem. And I think yeah. if you genuinely do it, then you know you can't say, "All right, you're no longer an employee, so I'm going to treat you very differently." Yeah. It's like no, I, it goes the whole way through everything we do. So when people leave us, and if actually you know if we had to make redundancies. We do it as possible in terms of connecting with the network, helping them get set up in terms of how they do it. So yeah. everyone who leaves, by and large, will always say thank you. Yeah. And they will hopefully go on to bigger and better things. Yeah. But, and, and I think, you know, I was going to say the same point. I was talking to a friend of mine in New York the other day. He said he'd been made, his, the agency had made 2,500 of the 5,000 people redundant because their biggest client had gone and it was 50% of the billings. So I was like, really? What, why would they do that? But I guess when you've got a really big client that just keeps spending more money, you can yeah. end up in those situations. But um, Probably uncomfortable. But, you know, mm. it's difficult for sometimes agencies because they do, there is a journey. What you do now is very different probably to when you started. And if you can't cross train or people can't cross skill, you know, sometimes it, you end up with too many people, and although you know, yeah. so there's those challenges. They're trying to keep that; it's quite difficult. Yeah. And I, and I think that's the reality of what we do is you know is incredible. Yeah. Um, but actually, that you know, all this amazing work comes from having an amazing team. But all that comes from how you manage, and you are on it all the time. You know, you yeah. can't set yourself up for success and go great. I've got an eighteen month plan. Jobs are good, and it's yeah. like it's an eighteen day plan yeah. because ultimately the moving parts and the variables involved continue to be ever more so. Yeah. So the last thing we're going to finish yes. on is your piv your, your little pivot recently, yeah. which I don't know whether you call it a pivot or not, because we were going into all these web agencies, or because we were we had a digital agency, right? So we were, although we were quite holistically creative, design and build and marketing, we covered all areas. Um, when we started going eight years ago into those businesses, mm. they um, we we just noticed that, that actually that work was becoming very commoditized. Like when I when I built my first website, like Abbey National paid something like eighty thousand pounds for a twelve page website. That was what the, that was the rumor going around, you know. And now I think you know you can build a twelve page website for twenty quid a month on Squarespace yeah. or or WordPress or whoever. Another another one of those name chains. <laughs> On squarespace.com. <laughs> Sorry. There are others available. But... <laughs> there are others available. Um, so, uh, so the commoditization, of, and we were, no, and we, and actually, I, I was starting to realize that even I, my knowledge was becoming commoditized. Mm. And I had to go and learn about AI and machine learning because, in terms of design and build businesses, I need to understand. But so I saw a lot of the, that's called the, the digital agencies becoming commoditized and having to move forward. But being an experiential business as well, you guys had a similar experience, right? Because you suddenly had 
digital coming into your business and then you also so yeah tell me what happened yeah. really well there was a there was, a, there was a, a number of factors really but i mean you know going back to when experiential started you'd create these incredible events so you know 150 to you know 15,000 people would have this incredible experience of the brand but then their ability to tell others about it and to spread that effect was really limited and then with the kind of arrival of digital actually they were great bedfellows because you could create an incredible experience uh digital social channels are content hungry so actually there's a really good marriage there so suddenly you could do an amazing event for one person or for three people sitting in a studio yeah. and you could broadcast that to hundreds if not millions yeah so that really delivered exponential growth but for us we had kind of two elements one, one was that in 2012 we touched on um well i love marketing we also i, I we got sort of consumed by this actually wanting to have tangible products. So we create great work, but actually we want to make stuff. So without any strategy, we said we're going to put £100,000 in and we're going to put value in kind unlimited. So we can impart our wisdom and expertise, give people a broader experience within our business and help some people realise their ambition. And one of our senior account managers, Anna, came to us and said, I've got my brother who wants to start a brewery. Okay, full circle back to your yeah. craft, craft marijuana. Yeah. And uh, we were like, Beer we know, craft. I'm going to have the police turn up my house now, aren't I? <laughs> There's nothing there, don't worry. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I just saw The Gentleman. It's all underground. <laughs> Did you watch the movie? Have it's you seen it? Yeah, it's, it's underground. all underground. Uh, deep underground. I've got the land to do that. Yeah, well, yeah fine. Get away from your chickens. Yeah. And um, They're all dead. Unfortunately, the buzzer took them out. A oh, buzzer God. took them out. I mean, that's right. good. Not good even claim. the foxes. Not even the foxes. Anyway. So uh, we we um, we invested, uh, helped start a craft beer business called Wild Beer, which is down in Somerset, yep. and amazing. Uh, and then we have Le Col, which is a cycling clothing brand with the Anto Barker, oh, yeah, yeah. and uh, and Heppel, which is a gin in Northumberland. So part of that was then we were suddenly able to get out of bed for a lot less money. Uh, we were much more agile. We understood what it was like to be. You know, uh, people are funny. They judge agencies sort of double standards. They go, "You're an entrepreneur or a business owner." And then they go, oh, you have an agency. There's always a slight as an yeah. agency. That's easy, isn't it? So um, it was really important for us to be able to impart the wisdom we'd learned, but also to help understand what it was like to run a business. And we had a call from Diageo, I think about um, eight months in. He said, what are you doing with this uh, wild beer? We're like, okay. Suddenly, <laughs> it's just that moment like it's... Competitive <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wish we were. We weren't at that level yet. But um, they said it's really interesting. We're looking at the innovation bit, can you help us drive innovation within our business? And we were like, absolutely. And so the kind of the part of that pivot was really suddenly we could understand innovation. We had a rapid innovation process. Yeah, I love that. Um, I love and then that. also it helped us understand the purpose um, and really defining what the brand's role. Because we talk about actions speak louder. So actually, how can you define what your experience is of your brand? Why are you turning up? Why is your what's your role in not just in the wider society, but just your role? Yeah. within the repertoire of and these, people these, approaching. these small projects but first of all i love that because not you are not like, i understand how the more technical agencies have gone very agile they've learned to do discovery and design sprints and they kind of have learned mm. how to how to reinvent brands products and services um to help them future proof their their businesses you know i think that there's some you know and actually a little bit there's a fight back against the tech startups that are disrupting so you know monzo might disrupt banking when a lot of the agencies are helping the actual brands use their brand to then create those products and so because mm. they're too big to do things quickly right yeah. but what you've done is you've kind of done that from a marketing perspective and you're right you've probably gone into these festivals ha oh, sorry festival but That's your your experiential events and you've had to market products sometimes you probably go do you know what we could do that better because yeah. you know and now in a way maybe you've got you've got ways of understanding how to you know how to rapidly create new products new brands you know and hopefully to get working partnership with with, with them yeah. to do it. how do you stop yourself though this is the thing that Pete and I have had a problem with which is the amount of businesses who then start incubating startups and then the distraction. You worry about the distraction. Yeah. Distraction, because I would say 90% of the people we work with, their business agencies so, are struggling because they've got a side hustle. Although yeah. I could get on board with a brewery. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Just say. Well, we'll do that. <laughs> so, we are, so I bought property when we shouldn't have done that. We've got side hustles <laughs> and startups. Should we just start Listen, again? <laughs> no, 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 no. But how do you deal with it? I, mean, I, it's, it's, it's I don't know right or wrong. It's just, when you know. I think the reality is that uh, I'd probably agree why most people do startups that sit within their sphere of influence because it probably complements their core proposition. 
ours wasn't it was about spreading out beyond yeah. that so but who owns the do you have like do you have like an entrepreneur in residence or like you mentioned somebody who'd come to you who is it who yeah who, well, um, Anna, one of our senior account managers whose brother is, oh, the brother is the so i guess so he you've got someone a, running it yeah does, so the does, other they're running, i mean they're running they're effect, all we've done is yeah. really be the catalyst for change to help them start their business okay so that's key we've got shareholdings key, within yeah. it Okay. And we sit on sit on the boards, but so you only have to give board time. But they've got people running them because yeah. a lot of these people, a lot of agency they have it, but they're running both of them. Yeah, I think it would, it's critical because fundamentally, you, I mean, you, you know, it's like riding trying to ride three horses. It's yeah. really really difficult. Yeah. Mm. And also, you know, there are similarities we all know across all the different challenges, but in reality, they need to be driven hard. Yeah, and we've got brilliant people. So all we were doing was helping them realize their ambition. And it was more than, I mean, at the beginning, it's obviously very in depth, and we had to kind of yeah. carve up our roles within the in the in the in the board and the leadership team to make sure we were covering it. Yeah. But um, I, you know, I think I have one of these challenges that you know and, uh, you all know well. But when you've been in a, in a business for a long time, and we yeah. haven't even talked about by expeditions yet. But anyway, when you've been <gasps> in a business a long time, I'm going to do that with your Lawrence of Arabia <laughs> scarf on. We have to talk about that. We, um, How we, Simon? Can we do this or not? Have we got time? When. Uh, we got we've got our next guest we, we, we can do another time. no 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 no, no. I, would, I was i was a throwaway comment but it was no it, no 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 no. We, we can do this it's fine we'll do this well simon's giving us thumbs up it's it five minutes so anyway so so the, the, can i just say that i think it's a really great lesson there because i wasn't criticizing i genuinely no. think we should use our talents to, to do look Pete and i have got other things that we do but we we're always keen to get people to run them because then we can just give it you know high level well, can I just say, because I think the point yeah. is, you know, someone who's having, you know, I don't know whether they're giving you criticism or something, but they were saying about, you know, you, you work too hard. I, I'm a kind of firm believer, and if you've been doing something for a long time, yeah. you know, your bandwidth tends to narrow down. Yeah. And I think it's really important that we push our bandwidth back out. And yeah. that breadth of experience is an interest and learning. You know, we never stop learning. It means that your bandwidth goes back out. And so actually, mm -hmm. as you progress and get more experience, you know, you become more sage-like. But in reality... You know, we've got the reverse mentoring. We're learning from people, you know, who we were hoping to mentor. Well, we yeah. can do some of that, but actually they're looking at us going, I'm not sure your life skills are really relevant for me right now. <laughs> so thanks. <clears throat> but can I give you some advice on what yeah. you should be doing with your social media? So yeah. I, th I think that, that, you know, the barriers and the going yeah. back to flat structure versus hierarchy, I, mean, I think there are needs for both. But in reality, yeah. the... the, um, the yeah, I must just say, but, you know, there are yeah, strengths and advantages absolutely. to both. Yeah. But, it, but it, that, that knowledge exchange... Yeah. It's really important, you know. It was just it was one way traffic when we learnt, you know, we looked up at our seniors. It was just one way. Now yeah. it's two way, and that's so. Really are you quite exciting. flat now as a structure, organizational structure? Uh, I mean, it's it's we're bit, we're getting better. What's, at your, it. what's your head count now? How so many about seventy five. Okay. And then there's a flex around that, so yeah. it can go up and down. So we've got we've got plenty of space. Oh yeah, of course, because so you good. have a lot of people. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so projects, good. projects, short term yeah. projects. Room for and, another floor. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Room for another floor helps to get the so stuff easier. You got a bad back. I have. And then you, you doesn't take, define me though. And then you take on some mad challenge. Yes. So uh, it came out because after my last op in 2010, the surgeon said it would take five years to recover, and he hoped he would get a full recovery. But he said you need to aim for something in 2015 for your mental and physical good health. And in, a, I love that. It's good. It's really. He was yeah, an amazing. He was the surgeon. He did the, the last two operations. Unusual to hear things like that. From, yeah. Not his yeah. drugs. He was, he was also. He was another. <laughs> he was another. So he, when when I went in for the operate to get the to see him because I was having problems with my left leg, he said we need to operate. We need to get you in here in the next two weeks. And I was like, I can't. He said, Why? And I said, I'm going to Glasgow. <laughs> he was like, Oh, I mean, my, my my daughter runs one of the stages. There. I totally get that, but you can't do anything that I wouldn't do. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's not legal anyway. Um, so he said, uh, you've really got to focus on it. And I was, we all have unreasonable friends. And unreasonable friends are brilliant because they persuade us to do stuff that we shouldn't or wouldn't properly you, do. With that 100k run from your house to, yeah, to there Paul, you go. we made so him do it in the that. summer. We Sorry. all need a Pete in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. And, I like the title uh, as well, Unreasonable Friends. <laughs> unreasonable friends. <laughs> I can, that, I that's your new personal brand. Yeah. Sorry. Well, there's a book in there, Unreasonable yeah. Friends. And uh, mine was Justin, who was um, in 2013. I was at my recovery was being a lot slower than what we'd all anticipated, and it was really tedious. And he said, "So, uh, what are you going to do?" And I was like, "Well, I haven't really thought about it. We work with Virgin Money on the London Marathon, um, and I'm, I'm going to walk the London Marathon, thinking that will get him off my back." And he said, "He said, well, I've been thinking about it, and uh, fuck that. Excuse me." <laughs> he said, "You and I are going to walk to the North Pole together." And so wow. I hadn't done any exercise, so I had to start a two-year regime of learning how to run properly, and it was amazing. So I had a trainer, 
I obviously had my weekly treatment of physio and then I had a kinesiology was basically getting my brain to connect with my body and communicate how to move. So I had an amazing journey of two years of learning how to did something like six and a half thousand hours of uh, treatment wow. and training and over 1200 kilometers. And then in, um, in uh, March 2015, we set off and walked unassisted to the North Pole. I mean, 1200 K, is that like the length of the... Yeah, that's I don't know what that UK is. is yeah. 800 miles, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Wow. So uh, it was an amazing journey, and we got there. And because all of us had started our businesses, we wanted to actually directly impact on people. So we raised money for the Princess Trust. So we wanted to help 250 people start their business. So we had to, it cost £10,000 for each person to go through the course. So we had to raise £250,000. Um, and then um, we smashed that. And then we thought, well, actually, we came back and said, that is it. We supply, supply, survived a plane crash and all sorts of other misdemeanors. And we came back and... You survived a plane crash? Well, a plane crashed on the pole, yeah. So that's another story. Don't tell him that. Just, uh, he just got into hypnotherapy other, so he yeah, can fly. Yeah. No, well, I mean, that's, that, that's an exceptional circumstance. Yeah, obviously. good. It doesn't happen. Only exceptional. Oh, exceptional. Yeah, exceptional. <laughs> uh, and then um, we, uh, we decided that we'd done the north, so we should go and do the south. So in um, uh, December 2017, we wow. walked unassisted to the South Pole. Amazing. And we raised $1.7 million for... Uh, the Roundhouse Trust and for Princess Trust, which is helping uh, do amazing things with young a people. Staggering amount of money. Well, it caught people's yeah, imagination. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, everyone is pursuing incredible endeavours these days. Yeah, but yeah. Um, as well a team, done, we, work, we work. We work. Isn't that more than Live Aid? <laughs> on the day and, and you know yeah. more talented now. <laughs> and you know, I'd like I, we Pete and I have actually helped quite a lot of Princess Princess Princess, princess Trust. trust. Uh, startups uh, with agencies where yes. they've started them. So, so you know, it's an amazing. Right, I mean, it, again, it really, it's a charity. really does help. There's it's a guy local charity. to here who've helped. You know, him start. So it's an amazing charity. People didn't. I when I first heard about, it, I was like, I'm not sure about that. Um, and actually, the more we dug into it, it's an incredible charity. Yeah. As is the Roundhouse Trust, which actually, I don't know if you know about the Roundhouse, but no, incredible venue in North London. Um, I know the Roundhouse, the amazing venue, music yeah. venue. Yeah, uh, but also the Roundhouse Trust does incredible work with um, 18 to 24 olds oh, from a social mobility perspective and helping them get into industries like marketing and music and right, presenting. Huh? That's good. Well, listen, thank you yeah, so thank much. You. No, that thank you for having really, us. It's been a delight to be here. It's been great hearing your story. Um, I, can, I, might, I wrote, I started scribbling a few <laughs> takeaways uh, for the episode. I think, um, you know, you're right about the value. Sometimes there's a bit of stigma in, in having behaviours. I think it's sometimes a nicer way of saying it, especially I think if the values need to be reinvented, sometimes using the word value again sounds like, oh, here we go again. Yeah. So I think that's really, really. And I think the going back to basics, I think, you know, for me, how many times do we go to meetings and we're like, Let's just go back to basics. basics. Keep and, things you know, simple. Yeah, yeah. and keeping yeah. things simple. Because yeah. sometimes yeah. it just think, you know, things just, you know, and, and things do break at cer a certain stages. Uh, and just the whole kind of give and take and the paying it forward and the charity stuff and, the, you know, all of that stuff, I think, is the, the right mindset of an agency leader and stuff. Mm. And I would definitely love to have you back on actually to talk more about leadership at some stage because obviously you've been leading an agency for a long time now and I think it's you not, could do a double I'm like really Dom. old huh? yeah we'll get <laughs> Dom in next time yeah, yeah exactly and I know Dom and I and you spoke recently on structures yeah. uh, and things like that so it'd be really good to hear about where you've gone with that at scale because I think even if you've got whatever the model is hybrid it'd be really good to hear how you do it because I think a lot of people say that we work with a lot of small agencies and we create flat structures and actually a lot of people say you can't scale them. And then there are definitely challenges around it, but we have got a few go bigger, yeah. but it'd be good to Well, you talked about the pod, the pod. At. I mean, you've talked a lot about yeah, the pod. pod system, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely. And again, I, I love it because, you know, what works today probably won't work for tomorrow. No, so. yeah, sure, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thank you so much. Hope yeah, you've enjoyed the episode. You. And, um, yeah, and good having Pete here. Um when we have guests in that are like going to be doing the financial stuff, I'm going to just shut up and you can sit here and I'm no, going to sit there. No, you're really good at the, the financial stuff. You're an no. uh, apprentice. <laughs> apprentice tax yeah, eight years in. For those who so wish to reach you. It's a 20-year apprenticeship. Right, thank you, everybody. <laughs> Are we are we are we are we finished? Are we still talking? Do you know I did this the other day and I kept talking and I was swearing and it still all got caught. And <laughs> Simon, Simon had to log on and sort of cut it all off. So thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the episode. It's over now. <laughs>